So uh, jumping into the episodes, I don't think we're going to go down too much about the different, how the whole campaign structure works. We're going to play through one episode tonight, hopefully. Um, and an episode is made up of seven scenes. Each scene uh, has a different sort of spot in the narrative arc. And every scene concludes with a struggle. <clears throat> uh, for the most part, uh, we'll, we'll cover this as we go, but this is where um, those convictions come into play. Uh, we have a struggle sheet, which is on our Roll20 table, and some tokens. Um, at the beginning of a struggle, we'll state the authority's objective, which is the bad thing that you don't want to have happen. And then you, as the useful offenders, will get to pick what your hope is from a list of a few different options, or make something up if it fits better. And uh, then we get into the struggle. Uh, the authority will claim a number on, on that by putting a token on it. And then it will be the youthful offender's turn to stand up. When you stand up, first you roll the dice. And if your total is not one that the authority has already claimed, uh, an, an open space, basically, you get to put your token there. And then you describe how you're using one of your convictions to stand up against the authority and uh, you know, fight back. Uh, then the authority will react to that, uh, describe how their ass is kicked in some way, but then choose another number and put their token on it. And then it's another youthful offender's turn to stand up. You roll the dice and you keep going as such. Uh, it ends when you roll, when one of the youthful offenders rolls the dice and the number matches a number that's already claimed by a token. If the number is already claimed by one of the youthful offenders, then the, uh, then you win, uh, you you get the hope, you sort of get to wrap up how you win the day and get what you want. And um, if you roll what a, a, a number that's claimed by any th the authority token, the reverse happens. You lose, the authority gets to describe how your day is wrecked and the authority gets what they want, uh, unless your you as the person who stood up is willing to sell out one of your convictions, the conviction you stood up with. In which case you get to uh, press the I win button, but um, your conviction is forever twisted into its perverted, corrupted form. Uh, if you look on your character sheets, um, there's a list of your convictions there with descriptions of what they mean and what happens when you sell them out. Uh, the disorder is the last conviction you're allowed to sell out. And uh, basically that's also the lose condition for the entire campaign. If any character sells out their last conviction um it's the end and we go on to an epilogue but um that really isn't likely to happen within the first episode all right all right so we're going to start we always start a scene with a friendship question i know we just asked a bunch of them but those are just to get to know each other a little bit this one uh will essentially inform the scene a little bit as well so uh does anyone want to jump in front of the bus on this one sure all right, go for it. So I'm asking pick a question. question. <clears throat> yep, you ask one and you pick who you ask it to. And and then they answer it. Okay. Um Hey witch. Mm. How did we first meet? Um Let's see. You know, I, I feel like Truce got into a fight that was just a little bit over her head, and I stepped in and stabbed a bitch for her. I mean, the second Memorable. part is true, but I, I had it handled. Mm, <laughs> I'm sure you did. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, whenever you feel stumped, think about this friendship question at the start of the scene and its answer. answer. And you can use this as inspiration for what to say or do next. Unless you're a witch. You probably shouldn't be stabbing people for frag's sake. Who are you, Panabon? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will open the scene. I will read aloud here. Today is the first day of school in the fancy new school built by Kingu Corp. So far, it seems pretty cool. And now it's time for lunch. The school cafeteria resembles a shopping mall food court with every Kingu Corp fast food subsidiary represented. This is awesome. You're hanging out together in the lunchroom on your first day of school. 
and it's exciting to have your favorite fast food available in the school cafeteria along with mix your own soda dispensers. Sitting at the table together, our youthful offenders prepare to eat their lunches. What are you each having? Uh, start by describing the food. This is an icebreaker, a way to get right into character without having to think too hard about it. Imagine what it would be like to be there. The echoey sounds of the large cafeteria with the beeps of machines and the sounds of many voices, the smells of the different foods, burgers, tacos, French fries, noodles, and kebabs, the bright light coming in from the huge windows along one side through which you can see an outdoor fountain with the statue of the Kingu Corp CEO at its center. Talk about each other's food, ask what each other's classes were like, make stuff up and try to slip into the mindset of teenagers at a new fancy school. Uh, so as the conversation starts going, everyone has a chance to talk for a while, about 10 minutes or so, and then I will do the kickoff. So the um, important I, the important thing today is that it's the first day of school and uh, we established that Jace is the rich kid. So uh, because we're all we're all uh, friends together, sitting in and getting lunch together, I have treated everyone um, to um, whatever they wanted. I've got tacos. Um, and a nice big old glass of swamp water, uh, as we used to call it, uh, where you mix your own soda from all of them together. Nice. <laughs> and when you're 13, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so since a uh, golden boy over there is treating us, which has a uh, spread out in front of her, she went to like three, four different places. So she's got wings smothered in the hottest sauce that they had on offer a huge thing of fries, a gigantic chocolate milkshake, and she's just going to town. She's not a clean eater at all. It's all over. I should add a suggestion here that as each of you introduces your character and talks, you should probably uh, bring in something about your looks so we know what you look like. Fair enough. Those are at the top of your character entry. Yeah, which is, which is a black leather jacket, uh, far too many piercings. And uh, Jace uh, is the opposite. He basically uh, is very trendy, put together, um, but conservative. Um, so, and uh, just sort of looks like slick. Uh, Char is uh, wearing a gray hood. And uh, they're, you know, chilling like a villain. And uh, don't, doesn't like the hot sauce get like stuck in all the little piercing? No, not really. I mean, like, you might want to slow down a little bit. It's kind of like any kind of, uh, and I kind of like pass a, here? a tour. Yeah, yeah, there, and then over here, and then over there. She kind of looks at the napkin. Yeah, I'll have um, later. I'm still eating. Uh, and Char is eating a, a, an elk burger. Why not? And Panda is listening to their conversation intently while stuffing his face with uh, probably pad thai or something like that. And he got a giant bowl with all the stuff in there and shrimp, tofu, and chicken, beef. Super happy. Uh, he's wearing baggy pants and a nerdy t shirt about. Uh, uh, Video game jokes. I, I can't come up with one now, but yeah, meme t shirts about video games. There you go. Uh, Truce is, uh, has a root beer float and um, two burgers. And she, like she's going all out and she even ordered um, like those, those little chocolate milk boxes because um, one is never enough. Um, so she's got two or three of those. Um, she's going all out if he's paying. So, um, she's got, uh, <laughs> thick ribbed cat eye glasses and, uh, <laughs> bright, colorful clothes on. Um, so right now I'm, Sarah is literally sitting at this table, uh, as a 17 year old, <laughs> but I'll fuck you up. Uh, Char reaches over and grabs one of those uh, chocolate milk boxes because he totally didn't see one up there. It's like, I'll get you back next time. I, I, I fork at his hand. 
I, I dodge swiftly. <laughs> oh, my God, to the juice box or milk box. You know better than to touch my chalky milky. Come on, come on. You know I'm good for it. Yeah, I know you're good for it, but I want it now. So... We're fighting. I got a knife if you want to stab them. Oh, please don't. <laughs> oh, boy. You guys. I mean, just a little bit. I kick him uh, under the uh, table. <laughs> total work. Next time I'll have a uh, more precise aim, so watch it. Uh, yep. Gotcha. It's interesting in this scenario because Jace is, um, is younger than some of these uh, peers of his. So um, he's hanging out sort of like um, beyond his means, as it were, um, in terms of the, uh, the normal high school uh, seniority levels. Um, we're quite a mixed uh, group across different grades. Um, and I think that... Um, Jace is sitting there and he's just sort of thinking like, yeah, it's uh, he's just listening to people and just sort of smiling tolerantly like, yeah, these are these are good friends. Uh. <laughs> so did you so did you uh, catch the new episode of uh, Isekai? Uh... Isekai, <laughs> Isekai, Isekai, Isekai bookbinder. Yeah. Medieval bookbinder. <laughs> Bookbinders. Oh hell yeah! Awesome. I got it yesterday. Uh, watched it on my way to school. My phone on the bus it was great. I I need to. Can you lend it to me? Like I haven't seen yeah, it. It's... You shut up. You just haven't. Like, yeah. Appreciate. Sorry. Uh, bit of hot sauce caught in the back of my throat. Yeah, you got it cut. All over too, he says as he's uh, fiddling on his phone to transfer it to his transfer the episode to his friends. Uh, in, uh, I don't know information mm -hmm. stick or mm -hmm. Google Drive or whatever we want to call it. Google uh, Drive, probably not Google. Yeah, Meta Drive. Got, <laughs> you've, all, you've all got the cyberpunk equivalent of smartphones, which are basically smartphones. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Dude, I love the opening on this and then I like I it's a, never skip it. It's is the great one. Yeah, right. I sing along Listen with the it. intro music. Do 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 There you go. See how can you hate this witch? Same way I hate everything. Witches be crazy. <laughs> rude <laughs> i'm going to jump in with uh, the kickoff here we're going to introduce a system of control in this case it is the fancy new school and this will kick off the first struggle most of the kids seem excited about their favorite fast food items being served in the cafeteria but quite a few can't afford to eat here several students point and snicker at a couple of kids a cafeteria attendant points out the sign that declares outside food and beverages to be prohibited the kids seem to be on the verge of crying. They don't seem to know whether to go eat their uh, food somewhere else or throw their bag lunches in the garbage so they can enter the lunchroom. This fancy new school seems to have some corporate drawbacks. A few more students have arrived with their sack lunches, and the cafeteria attendant points out the sign to them as well. Looking around the cafeteria, you all see that some students seem uncomfortable about this and have paused their eating, while others are clearly enjoying seeing the poor kids get humiliated in front of everyone. This doesn't seem right. So uh, I will declare in this struggle that the authorities, uh, actually, I'll read this out. Um, in later struggles, the authority and youthful offenders may choose from several possible objectives and hopes or even make up their own. But for this first one, we've got you covered. The authority's hope is that most, rather, the authority's objective is that most of the students accept this situation as normal and allow the kids who brought their own lunches to be turned away and ostracized. Your hope as youthful offenders is that the majority of your classmates will see this as an injustice and also to make sure that people who can't afford to buy food at the Kingu Corp cafeteria feel important, included, and get to eat. So I will start the struggle 
by claiming the number two. I place my token on the two there on the struggle sheet and say, what do I say? Kids with their own lunches all seem embarrassed and sad. The first two start toward the garbage can, ready to throw away the food they brought from home, as the table with the most popular kids laughs at them and calls them pathetic. I'm about to flip a table on some nerds. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're standing up. Roll the dice. Yes, it does. <laughs> yep. Before you do anything, you roll the dice. What'd you get? Three. Okay. Uh, put a token on the number three. Take one of those and blue ones. Now you declare which conviction you're using to stand up to the authority and describe what you do and how your conviction helps you do it. That would be outrage. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, so which is directing her anger right now at the, the those mocking them. She's going to go straight up to their table and just flip it. The food goes everywhere. All right. And how know. do you like not having lunch? <laughs> all right. You do that. Lunch goes flying all over the place. Like a couple of the kids go, ah, they go falling out of their chairs. And uh, one of the, the, one of the particularly big bullies who's, who's just been laughing really loudly gets another one's uh a milkshake like all over their face and shirt and like stand up and look down at it and they're all messed up and they just like they just don't know what to do in this situation um and that's when the um a voice comes over the monitor and says this is the principal i wait, i need to claim a number first uh the authority always claims a number adjacent to the one that was just rolled or close as possible to the one just uh, claimed by each offender so that would be four Put my token on there, and as I claim that, I'll say what's going on. Um, let's see. The cafeteria attendant calls for assistance, and the principal's voice comes over the school intercom. This is the principal. I understand there is some commotion within the lunchroom, and ask that you all return to your meals. We have a big day ahead of us, and you all need your energy. I know it's an exciting new school and your emotions are running high. And I also know that you're all capable of living up to the respect I have for you. I know that you can calm down and follow the rules. Please note that any disruptions will be met with disciplinary actions. After the intercom message, most of the students are kind of calming down and uh, mostly trying to forget what just happened and go back to their lunch. But um, who's going to stop uh, it next? Panda is going to stand up next, and he's going right. to... Hold on, pack. hold on. Don't even say what you're doing. Roll the dice. Oh, right. It's a rule. 2d6. <laughs> I Seven. like this rule. Shut up and roll the dice. <laughs> right. Go ahead and put your token on the number seven, and uh, then there you go. Uh, declare what a, what a which um, a conviction you're using, and then wow. say what you were about to say. He's going to use the, his acting convi uh, conviction. So uh, he's going to, as the, the, the principal is finishing his speech, he's going to try and uh, use his phone to get on the, on the PA system by uh, brute forcing the, the password on that. And as people are starting to calm down, he's going to play a song that's, that's uh, to write up people. Something that starts with a very loud, like, the something like screw the authority and then it starts like bashing electronic music super freaking hard <laughs> uh, some um, what was the name of that band Atari Teenage Riot kind of stuff <laughs> super aggressive techno music to uh, to, to make sure that uh, no no this is uh, this is uh, they're, they're not gonna they, he's not gonna let them calm them down with a with a bogus speech like that so that's what he's gonna do all right you do that and uh the music comes blaring over the intercom and some kids just look confused for a while other ones start cheering uh the ones who got the food tossed around start picking up food and tossing it around as well uh somebody picks up a uh 
uh, picks up a, a bowl of a half eaten bowl of pad thai and throws it right in a witch's face and it just splatters all over all over her leather jacket and face and she's got some noodles hanging from several of her piercings and uh it's just starting to turn into chaos in here um at that point the uh the again the the cafeteria monitor is trying to slam the buttons uh uh, trying to do something, and uh, at this point, it seems like uh, your riling things up might have worked a little too well, uh, because um, now some of the the bigger, tougher kids uh, are are using this as an advantage to um, menace witch. So as you're sort of pulling the pad tie off of your face, uh, you look up and see the the uh, the jock kid with the uh, the milkshake all over his face. Uh, coming towards you and uh, suddenly you're looking up at the ceiling uh, with pain on your face because you've just been punched and he just laid you out. Oh, no, no, also, no, no. I'm going to do that and claim a number. <laughs> okay. And um, then, oh, oh no. I, I, love, I, love the, I love the tension, how everybody's just like ready. I'm ready to, I guess I'm going to stand I know, up right like, now. My turn to stand up. <laughs> One thing I should say, uh, what we should have done before going in is there are two special rules that apply to all the struggles in every scene in this episode. One is around Robin. No youthful, no youthful offender can stand up a second time until after every youthful offender has stood up at least once. You can go in any order, but unless the struggle ends thoroughly, everyone gets a turn. Number two, violence is ugly. If you stand up by using a conviction to inflict violent harm against a person, the authority will get to claim two numbers instead of one in their turn. Ooh. Um, because uh, you can uh, kind of get the short-term gain of kicking some ass, but um, uh, the real, uh, the, the, the one who's got the real power for for ultimate violence is the authority. So it sort of plays into um, kind of my thing, though. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why yeah, I you'll have I've a tough line to walk there. Um, just keep in mind, this doesn't apply when you use violence to harm uh, property or damage property. Just when you harm people. Gotcha. So uh, those apply to every struggle. There's one special rule that applies to this struggle in particular. Kid gloves. The first time you fail by rolling a number claimed by the authority, you don't fail. Instead, you get to replace the authority's token with your own. Mm. It's a lucky thing that happens that keeps it going, and it's it sort of uh, gives you a little advantage in your first one. Okay. So those are the special rules. Uh, Sarah, you were standing up. Roll the dice. Okay. Four. Four. That is claimed by the authority, but because of the kid gloves rule, instead of doing the normal thing, I will take my token away, and you can put yours there. Okay, I'll I'll match Ava and, and be blue too. All right, then choose a conviction that you're using, and then describe how you're using it. All right, my conviction. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna use my fashion forward brawler. So um, I giggle when uh, Witch gets uh, the pad tie and, and gets knocked down. Um, and, uh, but I'm going to stand up uh, and, and head over to uh, the table where that guy is. And I'm just giggling like I'm, I'm one of his friends. Um, and then right when I get there, uh, the face drops. Uh, and I just drop down and drop like spinning drop kick, kick him. Uh, so I take his legs out and let him fall on his ass, too. All right. Uh, yeah, you succeed. You knock him on his ass. His friends laugh at him. And uh, the only thing that I'm going to say is I claim my next number is um, how is any of this moving you towards the hope of uh, having the uh, kids who are being turned away have a chance to eat and be respected? Chaos is fun and all, but uh, all you seem to be doing is making a big mess. I guess you're just a bunch of punk kids who aren't really uh, going to make much of a difference at all, huh? Jerk. Uh, I'm going to stand. <laughs> He's got to react first. Right, Chris, you're standing up. I think I heard you talk. Okay. Roll the dice. Got seven. Oh, seven. Okay, that's a number that was already claimed by another um, person on your team. Uh, who claimed that the number seven? Okay, so um, 
essentially uh, you rolled a youthful offender number, you win this in this, you win this thing. So uh, you could describe how you use your conviction or maybe also rely on pandas in order to uh, pull off the hope that we introduced, which is to make sure that the, uh, the kids who can't afford to eat here get to eat here and uh, aren't, uh, aren't treated as a second class uh, citizenry amongst the students. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use my rich conviction while all the shenanigans has, has been going on. Uh, I uh, sheltered the kid, I pulled the kids over to the lunch line and uh, I went and just got them lunch. So, I don't give a damn about my reputation, like Kung Fu fighting in the lunchroom, and I'm over here, like, hey, go ahead, and grab a burger and some fries or whatnot. Uh, basically, uh, it sounds like you sort of like all the monitors were distracted um, while <laughs> with all the chaos that was being caused. Um, yeah. I, I want to, yeah, Jace during the whole thing here was just sort of like, this is wrong, but also I, the rules, what do I do? <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah, we end that scene with the success for the youthful offenders, which means we will track that is uh, one point for the YOs. And uh, at I... the end of every scene, we, we mark the score. We want to keep track because at the end of the episode, it matters how many you guys win versus the authority. I would also but... like to help uh witch stand back up. Uh, Ooh. knock some more noodles off her shoulder and say, we're even now. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Just goes back and grabs her milkshake. <laughs> Alright, so before moving on to the next scene, uh, we'll do a reflection. We re reflect on what just happened, ask each other questions, and give answers. Each player, except for me, chooses a question to ask from the reflection questions you can answer your own question or ask another player to answer it instead. If someone asks you to answer their question, you may either answer it or pass it off to another player of your choice. If no one wants to answer a question, that's okay, but the story will be improved with everyone's participation. Uh, no pressure though. Who wants to go first? I'll go. All right. Um, Cause I sort of started uh, answering that already, uh, how Jace feels about this situation. Um, I think at this point, uh, Jace is very embarrassed that he didn't like do something right away um, and didn't have a good solution to the problem and that like everyone else sort of did did something while he froze. Um, so he's just sort of really um, embarrassed right now. Makes sense. Who else is going to do one? Um. Are we answering these questions about like from our perspective or from our? Uh... Or you can ask somebody else. In character. In character. In character. Okay. Uh, um, oh, go ahead, Chris. Okay. Uh, no, you go. Okay. I'm still. <laughs> um. What has changed about how you view uh, one of the other YOs? Um for which uh like my whole thing is i hit first ask questions later and she moved first um and and started the uh and stood up before i did uh and i i i respect that in her um but i don't like that uh i didn't react first or um get to make that first uh physical play so kind of reflected on both her and me. All right. Should we put Witch on the spot or did someone else want to jump in with theirs? If Witch needs a little bit of time, I can have something. Go for it. Um, Panda learned that... Um, he learned two things. Um, well, declare the question first, please. Okay, the question is... Um, what did he learn about your beliefs and values? But I'm going to tweet that a little bit, saying that he learned that chaos is very useful. Something that he wasn't aware of before. And that people are um, easily uh, swayed by emotions. I think that's what I'm going to go for. 
Sounds good. Uh, all right, we've got Chris and Eva yet to go. Yeah. You. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, how do uh, I kind of feel like we could, we could have handled that better. Like uh, we didn't necessarily need to have a uh, a ballroom brawl to get some kids some mac and cheese, right? What question is that an answer to? Oh, um, uh, number one, how do you feel about what just happened? Like, I feel kind of, feel, I feel like, yeah, I mean, it, and I, I admire the, the, I admire their strength in being able to stand up to the bully. But, uh, yeah, we could just, you know, buy them an Elbert instead of uh, starting uh, WrestleMania 8th. <laughs> That's very mature of you. What are you, 35 or something? <laughs> Maybe. It's not like I live <laughs> a, a, a life of a campus monitor at some point. <laughs> All right, last person to do one of these is uh, Eva. So I'm also going to answer how do you feel about what just happened, um, which is not very happy with the conclusion of everything there because. That was a temporary solution just for today, and nothing has actually changed. All right, so yeah, I'll wrap up the scene um, with the authority sentence, uh, which will be yeah the um, <clears throat> the other kids uh, get to slip through and uh, get get to buy food, but uh, some of them actually eat the food they brought with them, and nobody seems to notice with all the chaos caused. A bunch of kids are a mess, and uh, they have to go uh, quickly to one of the locker rooms to clean up. And uh, a witch has uh, actually has a bloody nose from getting punched, like, right straight up in the nose. And it's pretty messy. My nose ring out. <laughs> um, but uh, nobody seems to get in trouble, because just the chaos was so massive and sudden. And um, the rest of the day more or less proceeds as normal. There's some talks and rumors about what happened in the, in the lunchroom. It seems like it's about to become a legend, but um, other than that, uh, we'll just move on to scene two. I love no consequences. <laughs> well, you won. So scene two, the theme of narrative theme of this is fighting back. Uh, oh, the narrative theme of scene one was a, uh, What's up? So as we go into a scene, uh, a, a youthful offender, probably not Sarah because you did the last one. Uh, it's time for a friendship question. Who wants to go next? Uh, which? Uh, mm -hmm. Which? Uh, do you believe the, the rumors that uh, I can cast magic? I mean, you got to be good at something, and there's not much else left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at everything. Wow. There's nothing I'm not good at. Eh. Do you know how to take a punch? Uh, I wouldn't get hit to begin with. Mm. Right. I have the power of gods and anime on my side. You can't touch me. <sighs> All right, question answered. Uh, the story for this one is after school, the youthful offenders get together at the rich kid's house. That would be Jace's. You've all got a lot of homework to do, but it's been a long day. Uh, this is the big, this, uh, in this episode, we introduced the episode question, rather in the scene, we introduced the episode question. This is the big question that will be answered by the end of the episode and is a very useful source of inspiration for coming up with ideas. If you ever have trouble thinking of what to say or do, think about the episode question. In future episodes, your cell will make up and define the episode question together. But the question for this episode is, will Kingu Corp have widespread local support for its actions, or will the community begin to oppose it? Now, setting the scene, the youthful offender whose parents are an authority figure working for Kingu Corp, uh, or in this case, the Logics, um, 
have a really nice house and their kitchen is loaded with snacks of all kinds. Naturally, this is where your cell has decided to hang out and relax after school while trying to forget how much homework you're expected to finish before tomorrow. What are all, what are you all doing instead of your homework right now? Uh, I'm getting uh, I'm getting truce a a uh, chocolate milk box and I'm bringing it to her. <laughs> See, I told you uh, I told you I'd get you back. <laughs> you, you never forget. Which which definitely has set up in probably. Probably like in Jace's room because uh, probably would not go down well with uh, the rents. Uh, she set up like a makeshift dartboard that she's just throwing a knife at. That's uh, it sounds like one of those things. I think Jace is probably there um, and is like, I'm not the most comfortable with this, but also I'm just not going to say anything much about it. I'm just going to be like, okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Watching that. And uh, he he's there. He's got the homework. He's like, I should be doing this homework. Uh, and instead, he's watching what Witch is doing. <laughs> uh, I'm reading a book on knife throwing techniques. I'm saying <laughs> her form is, is proper or not. Oh, no. She's self-taught. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, but it looks like she's got the, the, the body mechanics down, right? But if she just released over here. <laughs> uh, throwing knives is a shit weapon. You need to at least go for a heavy pistol or a light machine gun, he says, Panda says, as he's gaming on his laptop. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sitting on the, the like, a lounge chair behind uh uh panda watching him play and and eating cheetos um and or uh cut to fromage and uh when uh when um char brings the chocolate milk i uh grab it put it in my lap and keep on eating And Panda says, hit me, as he wants a, a Cheetos while he's play, still playing. And just turning a little bit his head and opening his mouth where he can just I, put I, one in his tongue. I punch you in the shoulder. Ah, come on! Said hit me. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, she's kind of literal like that sometimes. You hear the boots. Yeah, but you, the... know, you know what I meant. Come on. Don't worry Cheetos. about it. That's what friends are for, and I'm nice. literally nice. You hear the boots of Jace's uh, father oh. approaching down the hallway towards the den. Oh. Oh, shit, out of tab. Pull their knives back out of the wall. I changed nothing. Look, 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 busy. This is one of the authority figures. Uh, as uh, one of the things I did not do is name the authority figures, so uh, that's up to the youthful offenders to do as we encounter them. So, uh, what is the name of Jace's father, the Logic? Oh, um, dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, um, he feels like a Lucian. Uh, I mean, I like it. I like Lucian, it. Well, we have a last name for Jace, so I guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah Mr. Mr. McMahon. Miss McMahon. Yeah. Okay. Lucian. Oh, yeah. I think I feel like Lucian. <laughs> yeah. Lucian that... McMahon. Uh, comes oh. comes uh, walking into the walking uh, around the corner, or, or as I like to call him, holding, sir, <laughs> uh, holding his uh, logic helmet uh, casually under one arm, and uh, looks around at all of you with a stern gaze. Sir, what happened to the dartboard? Is there gaps in it from knife marks? Oh, there would be. Oh, didn't notice that. Weird. I thought you were gathering here to study for homework. I'm willing to provide snacks, but I want to make sure they're being put to good use. It, Jace holds up the book that is <laughs> that he had literally in his lap. Working on chemistry right now. Nods, as you were. And uh, go to sort of sweeps his gaze across all of you as if he's deciding whether or not to arrest you for something. And then heads back the way he came. I, I hold up a cheesy uh, middle finger as he leaves. 
God, does your dad ever work that stick out of his ass? As as you're sort of holding up the cheesy middle finger, like he's not quite out of you and like stops for a moment. There's no way he could have seen you, right? He pauses and there's just this 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 tense moment before he then continues his movement. <laughs> if I think I'm caught, I'll I'll um like as I reach it up, I I and I see him stop, I'll uh just like lick the cheese <laughs> off my finger. <laughs> Jace is like so um amped right now and he's like, All right, we really gotta I guess we really gotta homework this homework, you know? It's called homework for a reason. <laughs> Yeah. All right. uh, come on, I'm almost done with my round. Uh, some of you at least start to dig into your homework. It starts out really easy and it's actually maybe kind of fun. As the questions go on, it seems a lot like more more it seems a lot more like one of those online personality quizzes than a school test. Just a really long one with a seemingly random array of strange questions that don't seem to serve any purpose. There are no math problems, science reading comprehension, or even history questions. Uh, how do you react to this weird situation? And do any of you realize that this so-called test is a tool for creating a psychological profile? They are Definitely. right now. They're Aha, what? Now, now we begin the second struggle. They are caliper testing us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so, wouldn't know if I'm not doing the homework, so. I'll lay out the struggle sheet. Uh, we should move the tokens out of the way. Yep, from did the, already. Right there, thank you, whoever did that. Palmer, I assume. I helped. <laughs> we helped. Okay, thank you all of you who did that. Uh, let's see here. The authority's objective is that Kingu Corp will acquire accurate psychological profiles, which you can use to create effectiveness for marketing and misinformation campaigns and identify troublemakers, but it's... Not only that, but it's right to do such things becomes normalized in the community. Uh, among y'all, you get to choose one of these three possible hopes. One, answer the questions in such a way that you don't stand out and that Kingu Corp's psychological profile of you will have very little useful information. And you get the word out to other students so they could do the same. Option two, organize a protest of the homework evaluation so that many students are unwilling to go along with it and you are not singled out as the only ones not participating. Option three, convince your parents that the homework assignment is inappropriate so you don't have to do it. They'll want to speak to your teachers about this. Uh, you get to choose one of those as a group. Uh, okay, well, my vote goes for the, the first option uh, where we uh, basically poison their data by act, acting like giving them as little information as we can and then spreading the information to the other students so they do the same. Uh, so basically, you render the entire thing useless. Yeah, I like that that part. Yeah. Guys, like, we might... Like, it's homework. Like, we might get in trouble for something like that. Uh, we no, we'll might get it. in trouble for not doing it, but if we do it... But it's just that they don't get our information at the same time. They can't get back at us because we did it. They just don't like our answers. And these kind of tests, they there's technically no wrong or right answers. All right. We Jay, just need to figure out the pattern. And all right, hold on. Jay, I don't want you all stands, to role play through this. Jay, Jay stands convinced. Yeah, that's are uh, choosing your hope, not necessarily yep. playing through the scene. Oh, okay. Sorry. it. Getting ahead of yourself. No, it's fine. But uh, I'm excited about it. It seems like you've chosen <laughs> your hope, unless there's objections. It's to... yep. Okay. Not my parents. Don't good. give a damn. All right. Uh, so special rules for the struggle: round robin and violence is ugly, as always. Uh, but for this struggle, there's also a resource token that'll be gained by either the youthful offenders or the authority in this struggle. It represents either the general populace's growing awareness, if claimed by the youthful offenders, or apathetic indifference, if claimed by the authority, towards King Corp's overreaches of authority. It'll show up uh, during the struggle, and essentially, if you happen to roll the number that has the resource token on it, you get to keep it, and uh, there's no other effect at this time. But if you end the struggle without claiming the resource token, the authority gets it. Mm. Mm. So I'll start things off by saying... Here we go. Kingu Corp is using your homework to build the psychological profile of you and the other students. Does that seem right? And I claim the number three. 
and then I will resolve the uh, resource token. Somebody roll 2d6 for me, please. Got it. Six. Oh. <laughs> I, you, Sarah. I stood up first. <laughs> Technically, I did. So who rolled what? Sarah got a six. Okay, six. Uh, so the resource token, uh, let's see. Let me use something else here. little token that says R2 goes on the six. Um, I think Jace is going to stand up first on this one. He's okay. already feeling really weirded out and he was um, All right, stop. I got to roll, roll my dice. dice first. Yep. I remember. <laughs> Shut uh, up and roll. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Boom. Four. Four. Okay. Uh, you claim the number my... four. A green guy on the number four. Awesome. Uh, and so declare am, your conviction and how you use it to do the thing. I am going to use um, I'm going to use natural leader. Ooh. So uh, Jace goes on to Metabook uh, with his followers of uh, m many of the school, uh, so many of the students, and basically puts uh, puts a post down, literally saying, "What was what was what was the question that the authority asked?" This homework seems like a psychological profile to me. Anyone else? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Does this seem right? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Exclamation <laughs> point? Question mark? <laughs> uh, yeah, you notice uh, <laughs> over the next few minutes, there's there's lots of uh, chatter about it. Yeah, I know, weird, huh? And uh, someone else says, "Who cares? It's easy." And someone else, you should care. They'll they'll know all this weird stuff about you. Isn't that creepy? Oh yeah, kind of. Seems like you're getting some traction. And uh, then, um, as I claim my number, it looks like uh, all of your posts just start getting deleted. And uh, there's no other. Uh, oh, you do get a message that pops up about uh, your posts were deleted for content violation. And I will claim a number. This is uh, as see. infuriating. As it is in real life. <laughs> so number five, I, I claim five. So uh, anyone want to stand up next? Yeah, I will. Um, once Thank again, you. I'm going to use a hacker, so I can. Hold on, uh, quiet. Roll you first. Roll the dice. Play this. Roll the dice first. <laughs> oh, shut up and it. roll. Can can uh, we what? add shut up and roll to the book? S seven. <laughs> That's not respectful. <laughs> oh, it isn't, but... All right, number seven. There <laughs> we go. That's there we one. go. All right, so I'm gonna use Acker to um um. What he's gonna do is that he's gonna make sure that he's gonna go on the 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 equivalent of the Wayback Machine to screen cap his post and start like posting it on multiple like accounts or or different boards. So it can be seen by more people at school and uh, like uh, add questions like, does anybody know how we can break this as a like call out to other uh, gamers, hackers or, or whatever to see if uh, if anyone knows how to, as I said earlier, poison the, the the well of information they're trying to get from that. So it's all answer the same thing, or uh, yeah, you know, uh, trying to figure out how we can uh, break it using computer science, quote unquote. All right, uh, as you're doing that, there's the thumping of uh, heavy boots again in the. Uh, Mr. McMahon comes around the corner and uh, says, Jace, Jace, come here. Sir, he comes out. I've just received some reports that there are some students causing some mischief on Metabook about the homework. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? And Actually, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's see, you rolled seven. I'm not going to claim one of the resource tokens, so I'll claim eight. And uh, you wouldn't like to stand up? I can't. <laughs> oh. Me neither. Robin. Someone else has to stand up for this. Um, yeah, it looks I like will. Jace's dad is stepping in. He's about to get in trouble, and he seems like he wants to say something, but he's a—it's uh, his dad, and his dad's pretty intimidating. 
Uh, I will stand up. Uh, that's a seven. Oh, you win. So, uh, not oh, only do that you means you get the resource token, though. It does. Uh, what conviction would this be? And our hope was getting people to recognize what's going on and stand up against it. If you need a little help, uh, as the authority player might suggest something like, um, uh, since the authority figure's in your face, uh, maybe uh, helping to deflect their attention away from the people who are uh, essentially masterminding this uh, subversive activity uh, might be a good way to go about it. However you might do that. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm not sure how which would do that. <laughs> well, pick one of your convictions and make it work. Uh, well, if let's you, go with... Uh, you can also request help from other people for ideas, but in the rules it says uh, to not suggest that unless someone asks. So I just broke that rule, but... Yeah, we'll keep no. forward uh, otherwise, so sorry about that. I feel like the best conviction is bad. Uh which is that she's a leather jacket wearing rule breaking badass. Uh, but yeah, I need help figuring out how she actually does that. Um, is... Well, a bad thing to do would be like, she probably just lies to authority figures like it's nothing. Oh, yeah. Un unlike Jace, who would probably crumble and be like, yeah, that was me that started it in the first place. Uh, to his father uh, whereas you can come in and be bad and just be like here's a casual lie jace's dad <laughs> and you sound convincing do that but uh, just my thought uh, no, that makes yeah. sense i don't know if he, he probably doesn't maybe he doesn't trust you but <laughs> probably not <laughs> he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't know how meta book works <laughs> uh so yeah, she'll uh, come out to uh, Jace and be like, hey, Jace, uh, Panda found some traces of that guy that hacked your account. And he's reporting it now, so, like, it's all cool. Oh, and, hello, uh, sir. Jace is just like, just doesn't immediately react to anything, and then he's like, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. I'll play off this. Uh, Mr. McMahon says, someone hacked your account? Ugh. All right, well, I'm going to get down to the station. I've been called in to start looking in on this. Uh, whatever I'm supposed to be doing, I'm not a, I'm not a security breacher. You just uh, right. stay here and finish the homework. Uh, stay off of Beta Book. Yes, sir. Uh, looks like you've scored win number two. However, the authority figure now has the resource token. And so we we fill out our our things all all see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something I was like gonna that. say I'm I'm pretty sure which just kind of like goes at random. Yeah, between uh, your ideas and the way um the panda's able to uh get the word out and not only you but uh, other people get to, to skew the data yeah it sends meme where it's like a flashing image with uh, a character dancing and there's a c next to it like in the same font of the one on the test and that has been posted on every school related board <laughs> an image of a scantron sheet that just all sees all the way down yeah all right Does anybody remember as... when they would tell us to do abacadabba Oh. Yes. In fact, I, I think I came I across that just the other day. I was like, huh? A -B -A I never knew that. C A D Abacadabba. Oh, never heard that. All right. So it's Utah Fenders 2, Authority 0. Before moving on to the next scene, take time to reflect on this one. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts. But instead of going into the uh, reflection questions, we're just going to state the episode question. Will Kingu Corp have widespread local support for its actions, or will the community begin to oppose it? All right, so friendship question. Ooh, uh, oh, yeah. Somebody have one they want to ask? 
I think Ava I should th ask because she got asked the previous two questions. <laughs> um, let's go with who do I want to ask this? Truce. What band or show is a guilty pleasure that we both share? Oh. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Yeah. Um, my first reaction. Oh God. <laughs> was because it was mine. <laughs> when I was growing up. It was the Spice Girls. So I think it's our our retro um callback. Retro pop. Yeah. <laughs> they they have a reunion tour, and we don't tell anybody, but we're totally going. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Retro pop girl band. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah, Gotta find great. a name for them. All right. So, um, now that you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and jump in with the read aloud text. Things haven't been going so great in school, and you've all landed in big trouble. You've been summoned to the principal's office, and you are waiting to find out what sort of punishment you're about to receive. What did you all do that got you in trouble together? Now, for the free play, take some time to have a hushed conversation just outside the principal's office. Think about how you feel. Are you afraid, angry, and defiant? Resolved to your fate? What are your parents going to say about this? You're probably all at least a little freaked out, and you only have a few unsupervised minutes to talk it out with each other. Well, does that imply that we are, we are all in trouble for the same thing, or did we just like? Uh... The question is, what did you all do that got you in trouble together? Okay, I, I told you to keep those knives in the locker, which like ah. she's uh, I, I, flipping I, them around in the hallway, and then we all, ah, gee. Yeah, I think. Uh... I mean, how how does that how does that impact us all? Like, why? Well, I I told her that if she uh, she she plugged a battery on her knife, she could shock people with it. No, I'm I'm. You know. <laughs> I think it um, worked. Just you know what? I think I, no. You know what? We're at, I mean, we're all aware of the contraband, and we didn't report it. Um, and I maybe that's you know we're all uh, we're all complicit now. And um, I'm still reading my my knife throwing book, so it's like I can't even lie my way. <laughs> so and J, like, go ahead. Maybe Jace was on lookout, and uh, I mean, J Jace is <laughs> Jace is just just freaking out right now, um, guys. I'm, I'm your dad's gonna kill like, you. I, I mean, I may be murdered. <laughs> I, uh, you know, he could. I would just be gone if I'm gone tomorrow if i'm not here like he's gonna he, he, he would just cover it up if, i would just be gone, gone. We'll, we'll he ensure. starts like going down the rabbit hole like full he's like i know he's yeah, like don't worry she, look she'll, I, like I, pat him on the shoulder i'll get revenge for you it's fine yeah look yeah. I'm, look i'm a like i'm a cadet i know how these things work you're so a he's, cadet he's you're like, in the system then they can't erase yes they can uh they can yeah don't no, forget better. i said it don't, don't worry. If you disappear, we'll make sure your whole uh, family line is destroyed. Uh, no, I don't want that either. Uh, he's like, so Jake, Jay starts having a full panic attack, like hyperventilating. And like, uh, and like everything like this is, uh, he's never been in trouble before. Uh, and like, this is like hardcore. Like this is, this is the authority. Um, so he's just like, <laughs> Jason, and it's like okay. it's okay bud it's okay he's, he's like trying not to like also cry at the same time while hyperventilating <laughs> proceed yeah so how are we gonna get out of it like uh, i don't know any kind of spells or anything that could just you know uh disappear knives or anything or do i i, I mean i can uh probably uh yeah, I'd, there's probably cameras around, but I I, I I could pocket it and make it disappear uh, under the chair or something. Yeah, they'll never look under the chair. 
Here, put it under huh? uh, put, it, put, put it under Jace's. Now, to answer to me, your I can... about what spells you have, uh, you can sort of make things up as you go, and they just happen the way you want during free play. If you go oh, too over the top, I might step in with, oh, wait a minute, but, you know, um, until that point, feel free to do what you want. What if what if we, um, like, wrap them in our socks and then put them in our shoes? Then they can't find them. Yeah. But then you're going to cut your feet, and I definitely don't want you to cut your feet. They uh, fold shut. How do you walk? Let's put them in our shoes. And then, I mean, you don't they're going to... They, they, they think we have contraband, so they, they're going to check for it. We just need to get rid of it, but right now we're just sitting in a corridor waiting to be processed, so what do we do? Okay, maybe maybe I can do something. Oh, actually, uh, mechanically, I can't, because if I fail that, that's my dis- that's my disorder, right? The arcane secret. So that's the last one I have to use. That, right? That's why we always roll dice before you declare what you're using. Oh, fair. Because then you can use it for stuff, yeah. But we're not in a struggle, so you could just use stuff narratively however you want. There's no, like, dice rolls to see if you do this or that. You just make up the stuff you're doing. Well, then I'm going to magically uh, well, not disappear them into, like, nothing. Uh, I'm just gonna turn them into something innocuous. Like, okay. it's a comb. You have a you have a flip comb. Okay. We yeah. all Butterf- walk Butterf- in, comb. Handy. We all walk in spell- with, with pens. <laughs> Does your, does your spell uh, permanently transform them into this, or is it an illusion? It is an illusion. Okay, just curious. Yeah. So as soon as you get this done, I'm going to introduce the conflict. The authority introduces an element of tension and conflict among the youthful offenders, which begins the struggle. So read this. One at a time, you are called into the principal's office. The man looks like a company CEO, very tall and imposing in an, in an expensive business suit. He stands towering above you, the natural light of his window casting him as a silhouette throughout the interview and interrogation. His deep, booming booming voice is commanding. It's time for the third struggle. Now, this third struggle represents the authorities' efforts to sow conflict and break the will of the troublesome students. Instead of having each interview with the principal and an isolated student at once, we'll handle a bit like a montage of scenes from every youthful offender cut together in one continuous scene. This way, everyone can be involved at once, even though the actual events are a bit more spread out in time. The authority's objective is to sow distrust among the youthful offenders and cause them to be shunned by other students at school for fear of reprisal. Your hope. Choose one of these. Be seen as heroes by most of the kids in school. Trick the principal into believing that you intend to behave better and receive lesser punishments. Or humiliate the principal or Kingu Corp in some way. Okay, without a bunch of role players that are just pick one of these. Uh, okay, as let's pick one of these. Um, I, I I like the two extreme better. <laughs> like either we uh, we we come out as heroes or we humiliate them. Yeah, but... I think I think humiliation makes more sense with what we've established in the role play. Um, I, it's kind of hard to be like we've got knives, we're heroes. You know, like that's not. That, that narrative doesn't make sense. We, we've got knives. Ha, you, we embarrassed you a lot because we don't, uh, because of an illusion is a more narratively appropriate hope. Okay. I think that's enough discussion on the matter. Uh, does everyone agree on settling on humiliate the principal or Kingu Corp? Yeah. Okay. Special rules for the, for the struggle. Same two as always round Robin and violence is ugly. A third rule res- refers for, re- refers to the resource token. If you had the resource token, it may be used to reroll the dice. Oh. If you use it, you give it to the authority. It's theirs now. But in so, because the resource token has is held by the authority, it has no effect at this time. Oh, thank so, God for that. We'll begin the struggle and we'll read aloud. The principal is imposing and intimidating, but he begins by speaking softly to put you at ease. Please come in, have a seat. It seems we have some matters of discipline to discuss. The principal does not sit and looks down upon you. You have such incredible potential that it seems that you've fallen in with the wrong crowd. These friends of yours are leading you down the wrong path. Perhaps we need to take pains to separate you. I will claim the number four on the struggle board.
Uh, I'm standing up. Roll the dice. Yeah, pick uh, number 12 and then do your thing. So I'm going to explain to him that I know all about game theory. And then I know that uh, the prisoner's dilemma is not going to work in this case. I'm using smart. Uh, uh, he's a brilliant <laughs> Like it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna work. Uh, we're we're all we're not gonna crack, uh, Mister. I don't even know your name. Oh yes, this is an authority figure. Let's name them. Somebody give the principal a name. Uh, principal. Uh, principal uh, Dinkelberg. <laughs> all right, Principal now. Dinkelberg. It is. It is now. Humiliation right. accomplished it's already. A- <laughs> it's like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, the first person to come up with something. <laughs> All right. Um, it's Principal Dinkelberg. <laughs> All right. Principal Dinkelberg looks down at y'all and responds with some matter or variation to one of you. This matter is serious enough that I might consider expulsion. And I will claim a number that is adjacent to 12, which will be 11. I'll stand up. All right. Roll the dice. Nine. All right. That one's unclaimed or was unclaimed until now. All right. And I am going to you. Just to be clear, you're each interviewed separately alone, but you're, we're sort of cutting back and forth between each of you as, as you stand up. I'm going to use orphan. I don't care. I don't know what you're talking about. Call my parents. Ah, good one. (laughs) (laughs) This one's well. Well, in your... Well, that may well be, but perhaps your actions even constitute a crime. This may be a matter for the law, Jax. Is I claim the number 10. I think it's narratively appropriate if I stand up now. I think so. <laughs> I think I served that one up for you. Thank you. <laughs> Even though it was like already in the text. Let's see. And I also got a nine. <laughs> oh. Hey. So. <laughs> hey, you win. I, I'm going to use trusted. <laughs> and. Uh, So eventually in this interview, he gets to the point where he's like, yes, this might even be, he starts being like, "Mm, expulsion. And and Jace has calmed down by that point. And he's realized like, nope, I'm, I'm a law Jack cadet. Like, you know, uh, so he comes up with, um, basically he's like, you know, I'm going to take responsibility for this. Um, but I know that there's no, you know, uh, as a law Jack cadet, I know that there's, uh, there's no uh, crime that's been committed, just an unfortunate series of events. Um, actually, uh, as a cadet, I'm fully able to supervise uh, the use of uh, implements for my training. Uh, and that's what this is all about. So it was an unfortunate mistake on my part, and I take responsibility. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. As a result of this, uh, they're humiliated. Ultimately, uh, the principal has to apologize to your father. Uh <laughs> yes. <laughs> um and let's move on to the oh, we'll mark the score uh youthful offenders three, authority zero, and move on to reflection. Nice. And we, this, we keep we keep winning. This is not good. I'm I'm really it's, glad uh, you guys handled that though, because the only like social thing I have is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, I don't know why I'm here, sir. I mean, I am sneaky, so I was going to be like, well, I wasn't ever even around these people. Have you seen me around campus today? <laughs> yes, I was on campus, but... Literally, <laughs> literally that I'm situation. <laughs> literally that situation, the first thing that came to mind was, all right, call my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, cool. Good luck. Our parents don't give a damn. <laughs> You might have to be willing to pay for a pay for the call. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I have a question. How do yeah. we lose? If you we roll... land, yeah, go ahead. It's your game. <laughs> I'd like to hear us other people describe it. Um, yeah. You land on. Because, you land uh, on a no. spot that the authority has already claimed. Ah, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So the dangerous numbers to land on in this case would be four, ten, and eleven. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. We've been really lucky. <laughs> okay. We as we're especially that first scene. That first scene lasted so long that it was like. Uh, as we're progressing, we're getting more lucky because the numbers the authority is claiming are more likely each Starts time. higher. Yep. Okay, I'm starting to get it now. The The authority gets closer to the middle where we're more likely to... Oh, okay. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a clever little mechanic. And uh, there's the reflection questions. Uh, everyone go ahead and uh, pick one to either All ask right. of yourself or someone else. And then the other person uh, or yourself, go ahead and answer okay. it right away. Again, uh, try not to take too much time on this. It's off the cuff reflecting on what just happened. Uh, I'm, I'm, go ahead, then. Okay, uh, I'm going to go with number one. How do you feel about what just happened? That was close. Too close for, for Panda's comfort. Um, and, like, he, he likes to keep things at a distance, being sneaky and uh, on the computers. So anonymity is his gem. So that, that was too close for comfort. Uh... Hey, Truce, uh, what has changed about how you think uh, about how you think of the authority? I was thinking about answering that one for myself, too. So thank you. <laughs> um, I, I feel a little more um, worried than I did in like the first encounter where um, like there's not going to be much I can do if they have a reason. Like if I hit first, ask question later in every situation like there um they get the upper hand uh and i don't end up helping my own agenda so um i i feel a little more scared about future direct conflicts with the authority um instead of just like circumventing and working around them um yeah it's my thoughts um i'll go next because i wanted to answer the same question um, Jace feels the opposite way. He's feeling new, newly confident uh, about uh, his sort of ability to directly uh, confront authority and, and handle them. Um, now, in this case, it, it's because of, of his place within the system. Um, so that might affect future like ways that he tries to handle things. But um, he's definitely like, a little less respectful of at least the school authorities. And uh, that leads into what I was going to answer is what has changed about how you view one of the other youthful offenders. And that was going to be Jace because that was fucking cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pretty boy God is out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to screen capture that. That's going to be my uh, new gift uh, in RA Core. <laughs> awesome. uh, Sarah, you answered Chris' question, but you didn't ask him one yourself. Okay. Um, oh, yes. All right. Uh... Turnabout is fair play, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it... Back at you, uh, uh, Char. How do you feel about the authority? What what what's changed? Well, uh, I believe that the authority, like, had, was uh, you know evil, uh, like evil because of like they had like an evil intelligence about them. But now I think they're just fucking stupid. It's kind of so it's like they're evil on accident, and it's just like a happy like they they don't know anybody, and it's, <laughs> and it's like now we got to educate them. Hmm. All right, that wraps up the reflection for scene three. All right, so moving on to scene four, the narrative theme of that is we won. Uh, let's do a friendship question. All righty, uh, Jace. Yes. Why do you believe in me, Jace? Um, 
I think the biggest reason is that you've demonstrated ability. Um, and Jace really respects that. Um, it's, it's like, you're a little, uh, Jace thinks that you're a little, um, you're a little much sometimes, like you're a little too confident in your abilities, but it's not without a reason. It's like, you've definitely got, you've backed it up every time it's come to it. Um, you've brought it. So that's why. I think the phrase you're looking for is up your own ass. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Chris. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll note uh, one thing about the questions. Make sure that if after you ask them, that you either uh, plan to ask that question of someone else later, or cross it off and make up a new one. Mm. You should always have six handy uh, to to pull from. So we'll jump into scene four for the story. Um, well, I guess the text kind of assumes you got punished at least a little bit, but. It didn't happen, really. All right, things have been rough for you all. Uh, you were threatened with punishment, uh, came pretty close, uh, but tough times have a way of bringing people together. It's time to realize that things aren't all doom and gloom and discover that you might even have an advantage over those Kingu Corp tools. So for setting the scene, this scene starts in a different setting depending on which exploit the authority chose. Uh, let's see, we're going with... Um, Anti-Corp. Anti-Corp King. Yeah. Here we go. An important part of misspent youth is that the youthful offenders get to set the scene, not the authority. So far, I've included read aloud text to set the scene for you. That was just to ease you into things. This scene provides some guidance about what you're going to going into, but the details must come from the youthful offenders. Instead of reading something off this time, you you make up the setting. Youthful offenders. You get to describe where you are, what you're doing, maybe what time of day it is, or what the weather's like. Make it quick and get into the action. In the first five seconds of the scene, the youthful offenders are talking about the trouble they're about to get into. Um, we're using the exploit as a source of inspiration because it seems all about how the youthful offenders bring the exploit to bear against the authority. Again, the exploit is there is an anti-corp gang. So there you go. You have to set the scene now. What's going on? Okay, we're we're doing something with the uh, anti corp gang, apparently. Yep. Uh, so are we helping them to do something about the school? We should, about maybe we should tell them what they're trying to do with the psychological evaluations. All right, let's go with that. Um, so I think we 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 arrange to. Like we make up an excuse for our parents, so we're all able to be sort of out at night, and we meet behind the high school with a member of this gang, and we're gonna pass on all the information that about the high school. Uh, you know, we we have we have the actual a copy of the actual tests um, because we had the homework. Um, so uh, somehow we've managed to retain one copy, and we're gonna hand it over to them because as actual proof, because before it was just us talking about it online and, and spreading the word that way. But we want this to get into the hands of, of people who are already outside the system. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, I like that. All right. Um, that's a bit more words involved for just setting the scene for the first five seconds, but we I can go it. with it for the first one. <laughs> yep, it works. I'm not, not criticizing just for future reference. Uh, five seconds, yeah. Keep it brief. And yeah, we're about behind. We're Behind the school with Ferret from the anti-corp gang passing on information. All right. Yeah. So Ferret's there and uh, <laughs> says, uh, what's, what, what am I supposed to do with this? It's a bunch of tests. Uh, are we, do, do we, are we in struggle right now? Are we nope. in free play? Free play. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, they're trying to get the, 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 these psych evaluations or whatever, um, on, on a bunch of kids. Like we all, all different grades, all have the same homework. They're trying to get like a feel for us, uh, like as minors, so they can control us. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, they're learn how people think you can control them. They're gathering information about us to help us to help them control us in the future and point us in the direction they want us to be instead of the one that we should be. And I heard, you know, I. I... Jace is a little um, having trouble sort of because he 
he believes some things about these gang people uh, that come from his father. So he's like a little bit uncomfortable in this situation. But he's like, you know, I I understand. Like, I I think you guys would understand better than most people. Um, you know how damaging this is, and how bad, how just how how bad the the corporation is, and how bad it is that they own this school. Um, we need your help. And what are they trying to turn us into? Yeah, that's, that's well, pretty messed know. up. But uh, I'm not sure if I get what you think we're going to do about this. Uh, they had a big gang crackdown. We're just trying to help people survive. What are we supposed to do about s s tests in a school? Well, if you... Um... If you pass in the right questions to the people you're helping, their kids are going to be able to, uh, you know, mess up with their results in the future, and uh, the, the people will be aware that the, the 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 system of the school is not to be trusted. Okay. As, as Panda, citing me with his own like. Answer sheet that 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 makes the result looks like a panda face with a with a tongue <laughs> sticking out. Yeah, they, maybe they we make... what Chris? Uh, maybe we should make like templates so make it seem like you're actually taking the test, but it just get it so it does it's not blatant that we're uh, we're flying in the face of the authority, so they stop fucking with us. And then pass it along to the to the, to the other group. Well, yeah, other... that's why we don't give them the answers to answer. We just let them know it's happening so they can fuck it up on their own. That way, everybody's is different. I mean, yeah. Yeah. otherwise I patterns this appear. This is gonna take some coordination. I better take you back to uh, one of the hangouts. Uh... Yeah, let's talk about it with people. All right. So they uh bring you back to a gang hangout uh, what's the place like um well this is the shiny new school um they've actually taken over the old school i like it yeah most of it was torn down but apparently there's uh, some part of the old school campus that's nearby they're uh, they're hiding out in it was the uh, the locker rooms for the stadium right in yeah Ooh. Inside, yeah. there's uh, some uh, LED lanterns set up, and uh, somebody's got a microwave hooked up, and they're tossing around burritos, and it's a few drinks. Uh, half a dozen gangers hanging out here. Take a look at Ferret as he leads you in. And uh, he's sort of, uh, Ferret, Ferret gives the rundown on the, what, what, you, what you told them. Uh, let's see. Then uh, I think we'll make the struggle here about um, involving the gangers. It seems like a good time to bring it up, even though there isn't like, you know, something coming in to struggle at you. But uh, so I'm going to in initiate the struggle by uh, not by describing King of Corpse response, but um, by saying it seems like the gangers like either don't really know what to do with what you've got for them, or uh, it seems like, you know, too much for them or not what they do. So uh, my objective will be that uh, the anti-corp gang will not be all that effective most of the time, just because uh, this just doesn't seem like uh, something they can do much about. Either because... Uh, they're apathetic, or maybe just because you can't uh, manage to convey to them what they can do to help. So for your hope, uh, choose one. Um, there's four different ones to pick from here. Mess up or destroy the high school record systems of grades and disciplinary, disciplinary records. Rally the people in your community against Kingu Corp in a big way. Cause Kingu Corp to have a public relations scandal on their hands. Or deface, vandalize, or sabotage important and expensive Kingu Corp property. All right. You want to fuck some shit up? Yeah, but I feel like if, with what we're going for, the first three might be the uh, what we're looking for. I like the second one. <laughs> yeah. Destroying their records? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. 
destroying the records wait. could be no destroying the records was the second one was the rallying the community yeah either Which one was we that destroy one? their records <laughs> by our actions against the test uh, either we uh ready up the community but by what we found or we make it known what we found and make it a public scandal basically i like rallying the community i think that's i think that makes more sense with the gang um yeah okay we're gonna rally we're gonna rally the community against king corp in a big way all right and uh actually my objective here is pretty defined i'm gonna go with that whatever you're trying to accomplish that makes king corp look like victims and you all look uh, are perceived as villainous. So, yeah, yeah, yeah fair so enough. Is... <laughs> you thirteen-year-old villain. <laughs> I'm fifteen. Right, so... Thank you. I'm fourteen. Same... May look like nine, but I'm fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Same special rules as before. Round robin. Violence is ugly. The resource token, which has no effect because the authority has it. Uh, but also the rule for kid gloves comes back because you have the advantage in this one. So the first time you roll a number claimed by the authority, you get to just claim it instead. So. All right. Um... Let's, uh, I'm going to start the struggle off by uh, describing that, uh, yeah, the gangers seem generally either confused, disinterested, or out of their league. And I will claim the number five. Um, Sarah, gonna... you were standing up? Yeah, I'm standing somewhere. up. All right. Okay. Roll the dice. 11. All right. 11 it is. That's an unclaimed. Let me move it. Um, and I'm going to use Outrage. Oh, let me find the right thing. Okay. So, um... That this comes down to the the right and wrong of the situation. Data mining uh, information on kids um, to use for whatever reason you're trying to use it. Like, what happened to being kids? What happened to being individuals? What happened to being uh, to, to our right to privacy? Uh, and, and so she just kind of keeps going on, uh, on, on how pissed off uh she is about um about this uh invasion or breach of of private and personal information All right yeah it seems like the uh the gangers are all sort of nodding at, yeah they're they're really uh kind of getting into it as you're talking maybe starting to understand or at least getting your enthusiasm uh they start passing out beers to y'all it seems like, uh, yeah, they're they're enthusiastic, but they're also getting ready to party. So that that is a chance to potentially derail your efforts into the distraction of a uh, uh, partying with the gangers. Yeah, I'll claim ten. Uh, I'm going to magically turn us all twenty one, so we're old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that how that works, but okay. Well, you don't actually have the ability to change your ages for real, <laughs> but uh, you, you, we've already demonstrated you've got some mobility with illusions. So um, you're standing up, though, so you need to roll the dice first. Who's going to arrest us, Jace? <laughs> 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 All right, number four. Uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, you use your magic to make everyone look like 21-year-olds. Uh, the gamers uh, all think that's hilarious. <laughs> um, uh, I, I now have, like, stubble, and, uh, yeah, I'm drinking my beer with my pinky in the air, I guess. But how does that help us progress our goals? It doesn't. Very good question. It seems like, uh, yeah, some of you are uh, probably a taken some uh swigs uh maybe some of you are lightweights uh it's up to you who's drinking and who's not but i'm gonna claim the number three here so yeah y'all are getting a little drunk and maybe just saying some awkward things that are <laughs> making people laugh and uh 
really not progressing much toward your goal. It seems like this is more of a party than an anti-corp uh, meeting. I'll stand up. Go ahead. Uh, that's a five. Ooh, Thank a God five. for kid gloves. Yep. <laughs> kid gloves uh, lets you claim that instead of me. I'm going to use knives. As she pulls out one of her knives... And she's going to... She, well, she's been practicing her knife throwing, right? She's going to throw it and it lands directly in the can one of the gangers is holding and just spills out. Look, we ain't here to party. We're here because information needs to be spread. And if y'all get blackout drunk, none of you... If y'all get blackout drunk, none of you idiots will remember it in the morning. All right. Yeah, you seem to quickly uh, jolt the mood into a. I'm the buzzkill. The business. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna do a little uh, a little sideways here on on what I'm doing for the next number, and uh, say that uh, there's a sort of a reflection of uh, headlights uh, off of the wall through the, one of the upper windows of this building you're hanging out in. Uh oh. And. Uh, one of the gangers uh, says, uh, Drek, everybody down! It's a Lawjack car! Seems like the Lawjack patrol is rolling through here. What are they doing here? I will claim the number six. I sit confidently and continue sipping my beer. All right, uh, I'm standing up. I guess I'll, I'll stand up to uh... roll the dice. Yes, I need to do that first. Uh, DD6, six, six up. Oh, damn it. <gasps> Either lose or sell out of conviction. Uh, all right. If we, we don't want to lose, I want to get people, uh, a, a little bit of time to uh, to to run away. Not only that, but you actually win and achieve your your goal. So Ooh. wrap that all up in there with your sellout. Assuming you okay. don't want to just take the loss. He's gonna. Mm, mm. You know, with all this acting and um, and and stuff what panda feels like now that the police shows up while he's underage drinking in a with a gang he's gonna move his trills he's gonna set out and become reckless so um i don't know if i need to describe what he's doing as he's setting out but i would say that he uh He's going to dash out uh, in a very loud and obnoxious way and then hide in a corner in a way that he's, yeah, he's setting out by moving them away from there, but to his own expense, basically. He, uh, he takes his phone and makes it be loud and colorful shoves it, uh, it, snaps it on the back of his backpack and starts dashing in the night to get the the, the Lajak to follow him instead of the, the investigating the place for everybody to be uh, uncovered. I say that definitely works. You get the Lajak's attention. They follow you. Uh, I'm curious, does the Lajak, do the Lajaks catch you and arrest you for underage drinking and whatever other shenanigans you're up to? Or uh, do you get away? Uh, um, well, he's also sneaky, so I think he knows when to like uh, a dash around a corner, turn off his phone, and then disappear in the in the thing in the shadows of the city. Uh, if not, I mean, I'm okay with him getting caught for like it's being up to drunk. You. It's, it's your, if it's up to me, I would go for, with his sneaky self, where he he manages to get away from from them. Yeah, between that and the motivation the provided the gangers, uh, you sort of uh, get the word out. And um, yeah, really, uh, 
spread the word about these tests. The, the gangers uh, seem to have a lot of, a, there's a lot more than just these half dozen. And uh, the word gets out. Uh, we're looking at um, uh, Useful Offenders 4, Authority 0. So even if I win the next three, you're going to win the episode. Woo! But, um, but yeah, at what cost? The cost of Panda becoming even more reckless. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> at least. That is, at least that is that a much. permanent change to Panda's character. Yeah, now he's reckless and uh, you're going to have to deal with it. So the key thing about you can use reckless to stand up if you want, but if you do, from if you whenever you stand, stand up with a sold conviction, then the authority will get to claim an extra number. Oh, okay. And you can't use a conviction more than once in a struggle. Not likely to come up until you start selling out more, but mm -hmm. um, that is uh, the end of scene four, and we will uh, go ahead and move on to the reflection. Um, all right. Hey, uh, Panda. What yeah. Do you want, what do you want to do next? Panda wants to uh, lead a, a very a big like protest online and physically against all of that, and he wants to be at the front of it because reckless. Well, he wants his um, his online avatar to be at the front of it more than himself because that's his more that the panda is more important than. Uh, uh, Pedro is himself. That's how he sees it, right? I'll go. Um, going with the, I guess I think I've ex I think I've answered this one multiple times. But how do you feel about what just happened? Uh, because I think that can mostly be summed up with how mm -hmm. the hell did that work? Uh, I guess Panda. Well, I would ask, um, how did the Golden Boy? Uh, how has this, all of that changes view on the other uh, Yacht Offender? I think uh, again, this is a situation where he's he's gaining more and more respect for like he's been they've been friends, but like he's actually. Uh, he, you know, um, he's he's been the natural leader, sort of, uh, but now he's like seeing everyone else have their moment and and how much uh, how strong their convictions are and how important this whole thing is to everyone. Um, and it's just, uh, I mean, <laughs> he's becoming more and more radicalized by his friends. The answer I wanted to hear. Well, Panda <laughs> wanted to hear. Uh, what what has changed about how I view one of the other uh, youthful offenders? Uh, uh, yeah, that that took a lot of balls, and I have uh, way more respect for for little Panda than I did now. I mean, I don't know if it's just because he looks like a grown man running through, <laughs> through the bush thing, but he, even after the spell is over, I could definitely I see that. I look at him, uh, he seems taller to me. I think what what has Jace learned about his beliefs and values? Uh, he's he's learned um, that uh, it's sort of extending from uh, what's been happening, uh, like what I already said, he's becoming more uh, in line with his friends. Um, he's also learning that he values uh, his friendships and and these relationships more than he does his uh the the relationships that he previously developed with the authority figures yeah we'll corrupt you yet mm -hmm. all right so moving on to scene five the narrative theme for this scene is we're screwed so friendship question has anyone, uh, let's see, this is the fifth one. So who's the only person who has not done the friendship question yet uh, in this your per scene? Um, maybe me? I don't remember. Good enough, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. 
Ne regard. Ooh, all right. Um, Panda, how did I let you down when you really needed me? That's a tough one. Um, that's that, that's what I pick. <laughs> Um, I'd say Panda got blamed for something he was he got caught for something he was tangentially a part of, but you could have like he was with you like right before, so you could have. Like say, oh no! Like a few minutes later, he was still with me. Uh, easily, like it, 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 it was just a, a question of time that you could have stretched it a little bit more, and he would have been okay. Uh, but you did not because you were like, no, I was a training at at uh, at five oh zero five hundred. So, like, it, it's not like we were hanging out in the lockers together at 501. He was like, fuck off, man. Like, the two minutes would have been like that. Well, all I needed to not be trapped in the in, in the thing. And you, uh, you, you, nope, you maintained because if you're not at 500 at the training, you get in trouble. So you had to say it that way, even though we were most likely still together. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> All right, uh, for the story, just when it seems like you're winning and Kingu Corp won't get away with their authoritarian take their authoritarian takeover, they hit back hard. Um, so for setting the scene, uh, it's up to you. What's going on? Uh, where are you? What's happening? It's still the five second kind of thing where we have to set it up. Yep. If you want a suggestion, uh, how about a party to celebrate your victory over Kingu Corp? That's what I put in there. I don't know if that fits the situation, but. Well, I think. Um, Go ahead. That about a protest to seal our victory. Ooh. Uh, I, I, I kind of love it. Oh, you're organizing a protest? Yes. Yeah. Or you're doing a protest? Yes. Yeah. We've, we've... Well, if we won, like people are, there, it's not just us. More people are, are joining in, and there's more people. So it's a little bit in between party and protest. Hell or, yeah. Or organize a... like protest, like walk out of the school or something like that. Yeah, that's what I yes. was going to say. Yes. That's what I was going to say, too. All right. Yeah, so the scene opens with, like, the schools out sort of playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah we've, got, we've got some people have got signs that say, yeah, screw you, Kingu, because it rhymes. And uh... school's out for dumber. <laughs> <laughs> some people yeah, so... have, like posters with the, the meme I, we made for the first part of our thing <laughs> where everybody was answering C and then <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah you're just having a good time uh, so yeah go and describe the scene like what kind of people are out here is it just students out on the lawn or no uh... there's there's students and there's you know the, the people who've been um, sort of dealing with uh, demonetization and, and that kind of stuff. The people who've been hurt in the community, um, especially unnecessarily, uh, they're here too. And like some families, um, and like some, some, you know, some people who, uh, are maybe like, who've suffered like those, like the more minor punishments, like losing their meta points for being friends with that other person. Well, maybe they're now thinking, well, they can't they can't take away everybody's meta points all the time, um, and so they're here too. And uh, I mean, Jace is nervous to be at this thing. Like, <laughs> this is like this is the kind of thing where his dad is going to come down here. He could lose his whole his whole future, but also he's he. I don't know. 
I think he's sort of talking with Witch about it a bit because they're like developing more mutual respect and he's just like, you know, I kind of don't care anymore if I lose that future because it's trash. Uh, this is this is more right. Like it's like a hearty thump on the back. <laughs> panda is wearing a peppy mache panda head on his <laughs> head. <laughs> He has his own sign, and uh, he, he has a few like a, a, about five or six like he other papier mache had <laughs> with him. He, he wanted to do it for everybody so he could beat it, but time, and didn't realize <laughs> how long it would take him to make these. So, wow. uh, and unfortunately, someone assumed one of them is a pinata. So <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Um, I beat the pinata with my bare hands. <laughs> there's no there's data in chips in there. There's what? With, uh, <laughs> data chips or USB keys with a uh, with a uh, like uh, anti corporate propaganda on it. <laughs> uh, I'm on the phone with like uh, or I, I've contacted some like independent news agencies that aren't bought out by, you know, Kingu Corp or anything like that to, to try to spread the word about what's happening at, uh, at the high school and uh, why we're having staging this walkout. That's smart. And the, uh, uh, principal oh, yeah. comes out to make a speech and there's something up with the sound system. They're not able to be heard. They end up uh, going back in as people are booing and laughing at them. Feels good. Everything's coming up us. <laughs> yeah. No consequences. <laughs> Till uh, the other shoe drops. As you're uh, having your party and having a good time, um, just enjoying this walkout and just seeing all these other people being involved. And even though there's a couple of lawjack uh, patrol cars that pull up, they don't seem to be stepping up and do anything just yet. Um, yeah, there's some some sort of still this party vibe, but uh, a lot of people start pulling out their phones, and uh, you hear some ex exclamations that don't sound like like cheerful party yops, but uh, 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 exclamations of dismay, and uh, more and more people are checking their phones and looking at them, and and uh, uh, several of yours start to 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 beep with notifications. As uh, you uh, look at and check them, you can see that you have a super negative meta point balance, which prevents you from being able to make any posts until you get back up to a positive one. But uh, also, uh, let's see here. Um, so it's like Reddit karma. You know, That's what meta post are. This, you know, <laughs> to post on this subreddit, uh, some meta, because you don't have enough meta point. Yeah. I go to the, the off brand um, one that people use that isn't as popular and go uh, <laughs> and take a selfie and go uh, uh, negative meta points feeling cute. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that could be your standing up with your pretty uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see here. Special rules for this. Uh, this will be a struggle I'm introducing. Uh, special rules are going to be round robin, violence is ugly, and the resource token. Here we go. Um, if the authority has the resource token, the first time you roll a number that's been claimed by a useful offender, you must ignore that result and reroll the dice. If this happens, use the result of the reroll, and the resource token goes to the useful offenders. Oof. So... It benefits me this time, not you. And uh, I start by claiming the numbers six and eight. Don't like that. And it Don't seems like, like a bunch all. of people are freaking out by their messages of losing their meta points. But also, uh, Panda, you get a message from your mom that says, oh. uh, uh, we've just been fired and demonetized uh, due to... Uh, due to your actions, what happened? Ugh. So, 
it, 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 can you hear the words demonetized popping up here? There are apparently a bunch of different students, their parents are getting demonetized uh, in response to their students, partic their children participating in this walkout. Um, let's see. Oh, I know. I need to do the objective and hope. Sorry. Objective is that the people in the community will shun the demonetized, leaving them to suffer and fend for themselves. These, this establishes an ultimate fear within the community that if Kingu Corp crushes you, you're on your own. Your hope? Uh, you can choose from that Kingu Corp's demonetization campaign is perceived as cruel and unjust, creating resentment as well as damaging the company's public image. Or the people in your community begin to work together to take care of the demonetized, providing them with places to stay, food, medical care, and social acceptance, even at the risk of being demonetized for helping. Uh, you know, I like that second one. Uh, yeah. I, I'm standing up. <laughs> we have to choose the hope. Uh, yeah, we have to choose the hope, but you, you can do the stand up. No, we do that. But I think our hope is people get over. I like the second the, one. Yeah, the second one, which is we, we work together to take care of the people that are demonetized and we say through the system. All right, so I've claimed number six and eight and uh, dropped the news that uh, Panda's parents have been demonetized, uh, which is uh, pretty dire news for his family. Uh, yeah, I already rolled a three. All right, go ahead and claim the number three and do your thing. Uh I come, I come from old oil money. We don't give a damn about this, uh, about this newfangled tech stuff. Uh, we can get your parents a job down here at the oil rig if they, if they're, if they're willing to work. And uh, same with anybody that gets demonetized around here. Who gives a shit about that? Man, their, their money. I mean, yeah, their zeros and ones. You can, you can change that stuff anyway, right? He says the panda. The hacker. As a uh, panda, you're about to respond. I'm going to take my turn, claim the number four, and say, um, Jace's phone is ringing. It's your father. Do you want to step up, Palmer, before I do? Nope. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, panda just recently became uh, reckless, so... Uh... I've been hearing that his friend is... Uh, old Hold company. on, roll the dice. Oh, yeah, roll the dice. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time. I uh, know, at least once I roll the dice. Ten. All right, go ahead and put your token on ten and finish what you were saying. You All right, so um, he's, he's being a, a... Well, a little reckless, but that's not what he's going to use. Um... Uh, Basically, hearing that uh, his friend has his back covered up uh, when it comes to working outside of that corporation, he, he goes, he doubles down and goes out and like, and le uses hacking to uh, get into uh, MetaBook and launch. Uh, uh, kind of a campaign that's called "Destroy Two Thousand Points of Meta." And basically tries to to get people to rally around their cause. Like we were out there protesting something that's uh, that, that that's right. We did it be uh, with the rules, uh, a, a stage out walkout, and now we're being punished for no reason. So he's uh, acting through the system and pushing information out there. Let's let's destroy that meta system. Let's destroy this culture. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's trying to get people online to be aware of what's happening right now and how it's affecting people and how they don't have to follow this rule and we don't need that corporation. All right, you're getting the word out of MetaBook, bypassing the uh, uh, the Meta points, uh, blocking features, and uh, yeah, seems like people uh, are interacting and responding to it. He's feeling bad for his parents a little bit, but. It, it needs to be done. And apparently his buddy right there is going to back him up uh, and back his family up. 
So Some, somebody nearby who was the staunch protesters like speaks up as what do you mean about the oil rigs? King and Corp bought the oil rigs. They bought everything. They get to choose who get jobs. You might have old money, but you're not making any. We're all screwed. Destroy 2,000 years of culture, <laughs> says Panda with his Panda Baby Mache hat. <laughs> so I claim the number nine. I'm going to stand up. Looking at that, all that red on the board scares me. <laughs> as, as, it, as intended. If you roll the failing number, it's your fault, by the way. That's a four. <laughs> a four. Okay. So, yay. You get to lose or sell out. What's it going to be? I'm selling out my outrage. What's it? Um, it becomes wrathful. <laughs> All right, so as it looks like uh, people are dismaying and about to disperse and freak out and, and all the wind is falling out of the sails of your protest, how do you snatch victory from the jaws of defeat by selling it? Uh, to yeah. R uh, which um, is going to grab Jace's phone that's still ringing, like out of his hand, march to the front of the crowd. She's going to answer it, but she's not going to like actually answer it she's just gonna yell to the crowd kingu corp does not care about you they never have they never will you're a source of money and labor for them but we have friends we have family there are others out there that can stand up and help us you're not alone don't let them win smash the phone and yes, that is a perfect way to end that. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you've won uh, five for the youthful offenders, zero for the authority. Bad day for the authority. <laughs> yeah, you've rallied the community to uh, step up and support each other who's been demonetized. Uh, maybe the whole oil thing will work, or maybe just people will come together. But uh, it seems like... Um, Seems like the demonetization plan isn't working the way King Corp uh, intends it to. We're gonna form a co-op. <laughs> so, uh, moving out of the next scene, scene <sighs> six. That was stressful. <laughs> <laughs> as as intended. <laughs> scene six is who's wedding well i guess we kind of know already but <laughs> let's go with the friendship question who wants to do one i think everyone's had a turn by now so anybody wants to you wrote a friendship question um i got one for um sarah's character why do you hang out with us me why do you hang out with me <laughs> and that by extends us I think because uh, I hang out with, with you um, because uh, we have similar values uh, and you can actually do something with them. Um, something more meaningful than, than like if someone ever comes at any of us, like, yeah, I can stand up to them and I can knock them down. But you're the one that really makes change happen and has the abilities to do that. Um, and that's the case for a lot of you. Um, I think like my, my banter with, with which like we're very similar in a lot of ways. So like w we kind of protect the group who really is making the change and, and has the abilities to, but like we just knock heads together. Yeah. We just, yeah. So that's fair. You're cool. Um, I, I guess since you brought that up, I'm feeling sentimental. Uh, I, I totally brushed Cheeto uh, dust on your back earlier. So you might want to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for the story on this scene, the youthful offenders went to the offensive and Kingu Corp hit back hard. Now the real battle is about to begin. Unlike previous scenes, there's no specifics here. You have to choose as the youthful offenders one of the one of King Corp's systems of control, which will be used against you. 
would also likely be targeted by resistance efforts. And the authority chooses an authority figure that will act directly against the youthful offenders. So uh, to remind you of the systems of control, they are... Metabook, demonetization, corporate envoys, new high school, and community consequences for individual actions. They're all appropriate. Yeah. yeah I, I, I feel we were facing against demonetization at the end there, with everybody being... We don't have to, but I that's was... the one that thinking either the high school or the community consequences. We've also done a lot with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. We kind of rallied the community the last time. So mm -hmm. That's kind of our jam right now. Yeah, the community before the book thing. The book is just uh, 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 the consequences of rallying the community against the system, so that might that be uh, a little bit like it. All right, and the authority figure I'm going to invoke is the logic captain. Here. Which will be your dad. Yep. <laughs> no, uh, your dad's not actually the captain, is he? No, no he got a, got a big promotion, but not necessarily the captain. Either way, uh, I'm going to go with your dad. Sounds good. Which one did we want to settle on for the system? Uh, community consequences, I vote. My vote. I'm good with it. Yes, yeah, since it kind of meshes well with the... the... The monetization thing, I guess that might be. Everything's kind of really. All right. Uh, so this scene begins with youthful offenders dealing with the consequences of the authorities' actions in the previous struggle. How are you coping with this? And uh, set the scene. Uh, do we did do we gather enough people to go against these actions? We had the protest. It, it went, you know, pretty much the walkout. It sent a strong message, and uh, a bunch of people got demonetized. Maybe we're in like a Hooderville for where like everyone's sleeping and coming together to like community share everything. So. It's like a mass yeah, it's that uh, underground that that underground place that the anti corp gang has, where they cross, where they have a lot of the goods that people need and barter for, and kind of becoming like a central hub, maybe, of the newly demonetized. No. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think that sounds good because um, we're there, you know, we already know that um, like some some people are going to lose their homes when they get demonetized because King Ku Corp owns the home. And um, so, you know, we encourage this. We have to be we have to be a part of the solution that we encouraged. Um, Jace is like basically been ducking his dad so far uh phone phone's broken uh you know <laughs> just hasn't just hasn't really like gone through that confrontation and he's a little uh nervous to go through with it but sort of taking strength from being around his friends and um just like realizing like this is not like the system the system is not one that i want to be part of um, if this is what the system, like, I'm see, I'm seeing the system that I would, that I was going to be enforcing firsthand and it's, it's, it's a garbage system. No, thank you. Uh, so that's sort of what he's, he's working through the crowd, like tried, like doing his best to just help everyone, um, hard. There's just more news of demonetizations, harsher company policies, arbitrary, cruel, arbitrarily 
rule rules uh, it's just seems to be coming in with greater frequency uh people here are kind of banding together and helping each other out but they seem scared they're just proving they're just proving our point the worse they the worse they crack down the more people are going to realize that it's wrong yeah sounds about right and in the meantime we can work on making our situation better with community outreaches and whatever we can figure out to make our lives better. So yeah, I think the, the scene is that we are with the anti-corp gang and we're setting up things around to deal with people who just got demonetized through whatever we did. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Yep. And we're sort of, you know, uh, pooling resources and like, you know, hit like trade, like basically in, in massively enlarging this barter economy <laughs> because at least everyone, you know, everyone's got their stuff that they had, even if they don't have a home anymore. Uh, Panda, your parents have uh, had a talk with uh, you and your sister to let you know that they are not sure what they're going to do, but they're strongly considering moving away from Neo Babylon to another uh, another place. Panda says that he understands and he apologizes for what his actions caused, but he will remain here to help the people who can't afford to move away. What? That's ridiculous. Of course not. You're you're going to be coming with your family. N no. I did that to you, and I'm likely to do it again um, in the next place we settle in. Right now, I need to help the people who, who, who my friends and I have freed. We'll talk about this later, they say, looking exhausted and depressed. Yes, make sure that your affairs and travel documents are all in order. We will talk next week. And your sister glares at you. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he looks away from his sister because he knows he's <laughs> ruined a lot of good things for her. Char is uh, looking up like sustainable living options, like uh, seeing what they can grow in the soil nearby. It's off the grid, uh, so he's it's just a pretty like, urban area. But yeah, th there's some possibilities. And then he's looking at squatters' rights laws and whatnot, and just like, oh, I can help you there. Sweet. <laughs> and he's trying to uh, disseminate this information the best he can, so that as many people as, as possible can have the information they need to, you know, make it. And uh, Truce is uh, using um, not Metabook, uh, one of the other off-brands. I'm trying to think. I, I thought Twitter, but then I thought Bitter. And I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, she's using one of those ones to kind of build a, a following and a platform for the the uh, resistance. And like, um, I know it's hard, but there's a community here that'll support you. We're all doing well. Um, you know, if if you've been unhappy, uh, now's the time to do it because we're stronger together and blah, blah, blah. So lots of Instagram posts and... Tom uh, Babylon instead of Tumblr. Yeah, right? <laughs> Which is mostly just making sure there's no fights among the newly disenfranchised. <laughs> and uh, I think one of the things that Jace wants to make sure happens is that, you know, the, the people who are losing things aren't like ending up indebted to something else mm. um, to try and like re-monetize themselves in like, you know, in like a cash way, like, hey, 
like, oh yeah, my like my bank accounts are closed, but I can still get a loan from from over here. No, because you'll end up in the purgatorium as soon as you don't make that second payment. You know, because he knows all about those debt repayment centers. You'll end up on forced labor. Um, at least, at least here, working in this group, you're working. We're working together because um, the he's, he starts going full labor. Uh, you know, like our labor is the only thing that we really own. It's the only thing we can exchange for value. <laughs> he's going more and more left. All right. Uh, as you're uh, doing that, somebody uh, comes up to you, Jace, and says, oh, "Hey." Uh, you actually recognize him. It's one of those, uh, it's the bully that got the, uh, the milkshake in the face uh, that day in the cafeteria, along with a couple of their friends. Uh, they got this sort of snide grin on their face. Aha, uh -huh, look, it's the ex Lawjack. He's uh, just, sup. <laughs> What's your daddy going to do now, Lawjack? Couldn't say. Yeah, they start laughing. Yeah, you're funny. Always have been. You've always been a funny guy. You know what's funny? That sign they put in your house. No, I haven't been there. He's uh, putting on a cool face. They uh, wander away uh, chuckling and laughing and pointing at you without further explanation. Mm. Curiouser and curiouser. As you look around, as you look over and thinking about Logix and your dad, you can see it looks like a, a couple of patrol cars are escorting a, uh, uh, geez, it's a ride control van uh, heading over here. It's time uh, to uh, organize people. As you're looking over, you can see the uh, the cars pull over and Logix start pouring out. Must have been like a dozen of them in that van and uh, four per, per patrol car. Uh, getting out some riot control gear and moving forward. And they, um, um, one of the uh, sergeants that you recognize, who's just one of the, you know, I mean, there's a lot of nasty ones in the force, but this one's seems to enjoy it the most. Calls out, this is an illegal market, unauthorized market. By issue of a Kingu Corp policy, and then they list off a number, we are authorized to disperse this and arrest anyone involved in illegal commerce. Present yourselves and do not resist. As they start like... forming up and moving up. And we'll start the struggle. Yeah, I want to stand up. Yeah, well me too. We'll start by, uh, <laughs> let's see. The authority's objective is to publicly discredit youthful offenders in your message and maybe even put you behind bars. I'll lean towards that end more than anything else. Um, your hope is that the struggle for your community against King Corp will be a community struggle and not just a few kids against the world. This is essentially the answer of the question. And I begin the struggle by claiming the number seven and announce that the Lawjacks are arresting people who are violating King Corp's new rules and policies. So, uh, someone was standing up, I believe. I, I was standing up everyone. first. No, oh, everyone. Put that but finger I... down. No, I, I think I heard Sarah's voice first. So. Yes. Yeah. Who yeah. <laughs> uh, is whoever does it first? And then there's the oh wait, let's go with the special rule part of things. So uh if the youthful offenders have the resource token, they can do the re-roll. Uh you can give it to the authority to allow a re-roll. If the authority has the resource token, they can give it to the youthful offenders to make you re-roll. No dice roll can be re-rolled more than once. Oof. So it can pass back and forth on this. <laughs> Cool. All right. So I'll roll first. Four. All right. Uh, put your token down and do your thing. All right. Um, I get my selfie stick uh, and I turn on the record for um, for what's happening. Uh, and what I actually using what was Oh, I'm using. Um, sorry. Ready? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, I'm using pretty and tough because I'm both. Um, all right. Yeah. So I'm going to use pretty um, just to hold it uh, out and, and kind of keep the following going and saying, uh, look, no one's causing a scene here. Um, 
we're we're just living lives. Um, we're independent. We're not under anyone's boot. We're not causing trouble. And they're gonna start a fight here, uh, for no good reason. Uh, who's with me? And like, uh, starting to raise the the community into. Yeah, you get a bunch of likes, and people here start cheering. And uh, however, the lawjacks form a line with riot shields and start to advance it towards the crowd. Looks like you might be. Looks like some people are going to be under some people's boots. All right, I was the pad that was that up. Try to hack and scramble roll there. first. <laughs> yep, roll, roll nice. first. <laughs> <laughs> Almost a nine. All right, lay down your token and continue. All right, he's going to try to hack at their communication and scramble it so they, they don't know what each other are doing and where they're going and try to cause confusion in the Lawjack uh, unit uh, via screwing with their communication. Okay, yeah, it seems to work. Some of the Lawjacks are, like, turning and looking at each other, putting their hands up at their at their comm. Yeah, they... Yeah, he's yeah. using the same command voice that the text to speech uh, commander use. Tell them turn right, go left. Blah, 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 blah. They look a little ridiculous for a while. Some of the people nearby that were initially intimidated like start to laugh and point. Yeah. Then, then the uh, logic sergeant like comes up and rips off one of them and starts yelling, "Turn off your comms! We don't need those, ah, boys!" And uh, they move forward. Give them one the person just. From afar. Yeah, what one person like raises one of the logics raises up their their baton and just smacks somebody across the face uh, so hard they go spinning down and, and teeth go flying. They, the person was just standing there. Oh shit! Hit. I want to stand up. Go for it. Roll the dice. Three. All right, that one is not yet claimed, so go for it. Okay, I am going to use bad and uh, I'm gonna like grabbing like the nearest anybody nearby all the rotten fruits that are you know have been set aside because they're not edible and grabbing like um, they, they gotta have like bear mace or something right and we're gonna make some like impromptu anti-riot control things. My first thought was Molotov cocktails, but I'm like, no, let's not go ultra violence yet. I don't, I, I'm not monstrous yet. <laughs> I haven't sold out bad. Uh, and so they're just going to start pelting um, the line of riot cops. Uh, yeah, you're, you're arming the line of people. They're pelting the riot cops, slowing their advance. Uh, one of the riot cops gets winged like uh, on the cheek below their visor, and it seems like they like they hold up their hand and they're bleeding. One of the other riot cops is, "You, you lawless bastards!" Draws their sidearm and starts shooting into the crowd. People start surging and falling. Uh, some you're pretty sure at least somebody just got killed. Uh, I'm standing up. Claim number two, and you may now stand. Yep, go for it. Roll the dice. We're all fighting to stand. <laughs> This is cool. Six. Oh, it's yet another one that hasn't been inclined. The board is really filling up. Uh, <laughs> this is... uh, all right. It, it, Declare uh, conviction and do your thing. I'm going to use magic. Uh, right. uh, I, I was just going to like use magic to undo like all like the parking brakes on all the squad cars to have them like roll down the hill. But if they're shooting at people, uh, all 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 their cars are going to explode as I throw fireballs in their gas tank or some shit. Okay, you probably don't have like giant fireball magic, but little spark magic can do wonders on gas tanks. Yeah, cop cars start exploding, and uh, let's see, it's against property of people, so it doesn't break the violence is <laughs> ugly rule. Uh, so I don't get to claim two numbers. The closest number I can claim isn't anywhere near adjacent. Is it's going to be a ten? As yeah. I claim the number ten, uh, looks like yeah, the law jacks are freaked out. Unfortunately, when cops freak out, they ramp up the murder, 
and more of them are drawing sidearms or just hitting people. And it seems like the cops are panicking, going into like rampage chaos mode, just beating people down, stomping on them, shooting them. People are fighting and brawling with them. It is a bloody, bloody melee and people are getting killed. Stand up. Yeah. I don't like these odds, guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be rough. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> I'm so tempted to make you re-roll, but uh... Uh, yeah, go. I mean, you can. Nope, nope, nope. I won't. I'm gonna sit in my resource token because he's uh, gonna save it until turn. one of us lands on one that we already have. I I actually did not know what I was gonna do there. I was expecting to lose. Uh... <laughs> This is very thematically appropriate for this scene <laughs> to fill out like this, but you know, yes, it's can never predict price. All right, what's your conviction? All right, um, he's going to use natural leader, and he's going to basically just be like, he he knows the logic's weaknesses, and there's like a dozen of them, and there's like way more of us, and yeah, they've got guns and are shooting, but their armor is heavy. So if you just get in fast and knock them over, they're they're down, um, and you can start, you know, or, or get one of their shields. He just starts telling people like, "We got to, you know, it <laughs> running running away. You'll just get shot in the back. Let's go." All right. So you're 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 setting up a motivated resistance, somewhat organized. And people are moving with tactics, kind of glancing at the logic. So there's a bunch of them here, like most of the ones from the precinct. You don't see your father among them, mm. which is kind of a relief, perhaps. Um, it's a relief and a concern. I, I, I'm conflicted. <laughs> but uh, as as you're sort of like, there, there's a, one of the uh, uh, patrol officers in rag gear looks at you, locks eyes, like recognizes you, recognize them. Like they've babysat you before, uh, you know, a few <laughs> years ago. Uh, but you also know that they're one of the one of the law jacks that's all in with the whole uh, nasty side of things. Remember when and you had just... to wipe the shit from my ass? <laughs> <laughs> he looks down and spits and says, Ha! Ah, I always thought your father was a loser. Now him and you are out of the law jacks. You're a disgraced and demonetized piece of garbage, and your dad's just drinking himself to death at the bar. That's right. Your father's drinking. And you did it. All right. Is and, that... Uh, um, that would you, be my you, turn. You claim 11. You claim 11, uh, and they're yeah, all full. That was, so. was, was, that, was that everyone? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Anyone can stand up. Yeah, I'm going to stand up again. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. You rolled Got an eight. Uh, yep. yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to use my resource token to make you re-roll that, I'm afraid. Because it's you know, one of the numbers I wanted you to roll. So uh, sell out or take the loss. Who rolled it? That was uh, Chris. Yeah, you. Did you oh, roll Chris it? did. Uh, Chris yeah, rolled I the eight. I didn't roll oh. it. Oh, yeah, Chris no. Did just roll it you of said. That he's standing? Yeah. yeah, you yeah. said you were standing roll up, so you should roll. You tell me. Um, make, make the call. Chris, were you saying I'm standing up when you rolled there? I did. Yeah. Uh, I. I, that was my intention, but I didn't say it. But we'll, yeah. we'll stick go with it. Go for it. Yep, you go for yep. it, Chris. You were going to stand up then, and uh, you now have the choice then to either sell out or or lose. It'd be a really cool thematic loss, right? No, stop it. But it would we're be still a gonna cool win the episode. Shout out too. Okay. Oh, so I so this is how I we win, but I sell out, right? If or, we, to, or we or lose. you just can lose. I mean, you you know we're winning the episode episode, anyway. Even if you lose this struggle, Uh, I will uh, I will use uh, arcane studies again, and then I will sell out. uh, I will sell out. uh, I think you have to use sell out the one you're using. Yep. Yeah, it's whatever you use to win the struggle. Yeah, so I'll I'll continue using the magic since I blew some stuff up. Uh, beforehand, I'm going to. Uh, oh, well, well, one more thing: you can't reuse a conviction in the same struggle. Oh, okay. You're gonna have to sell out something else. 
or uh, I will sell out with Rid. So I'm going to actually bribe the remaining uh, cops. I'm like, dude, this is not worth your time. You guys are already going to have to walk back to the precinct as it is. Just uh, here, I got all this money. And just start making it rain credits. And hopefully <laughs> they'll, uh, they'll back up. All right. And ultimately, the law jacks uh, accept the bribes as, uh, you know, advance fine payments. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not quite sure to do what about those cars that blew up, but who knows how that happened. That's, uh, uh, yeah. Who, insurance. Who? It's fine. Yes. Insurance right. deals with that. <laughs> now, the ants, instead of uh, the reflection questions, we decided to answer the episode question together as a group, which was. Will Kingu Corp have widespread local support for its actions, or will the community begin to oppose it? That seems pretty obvious. I think the community is beginning to oppose it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we're done <laughs> with that part. Uh, moving on to scene seven, the dust settles. Uh, youthful offender chooses a friendship question. Oh, no, I got one. All right, go for it. I wanted Thanks. to ask this one. Um, to Jace. Yes. What do you wish you could tell me, but won't ever say out loud? <laughs> um, man, at this point, I ship it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do too. At this point, uh, it's like, uh, it's like an opposites kind of a situation. But also just just there's been so much recent respect uh, growing that it's like it's going to be it's especially because of the that little bit of age difference. It's very easy to like flip that hormonal switch <laughs> uh, and, and just be like, oh, my. <laughs> yeah, but he's definitely um, answer the question, sir. Answer the question. <laughs> He'll never. He'll. He will probably never reveal his intense crush on you. Aww. <laughs> that's freaking adorable. All right. So I like playing the teenagers. They're just so cute. <laughs> so they're hilarious. <laughs> the story is largely resolved at this point. The scene is effectively an epilogue or a wrap up, but it also carries just as much weight toward the final score that determines whether the wiles or authority wins the episode, which is kind of already known at this point. <laughs> In real life, big events can happen that seem to shake the world, but how people respond, think about, and react to those events have as much, if not more, to do with how or whether the world changes. It might feel like the struggle is over and the dust has settled, but the story isn't over yet. So, setting the scene. Based on what happened at the end of the previous struggle, where are the youthful offenders now, and what are they doing, and what's the overall mood? The youthful offenders set the scene. We are most definitely setting up a new base of operations for the anti-corp gang, um, like an old, maybe half burned out apartment block that just somehow didn't get demolished in the refurbishing of this part of the city. And, right. and uh, we're setting up there. Imagine there's a bunch of people there helping out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the scene is effectively the same as the reflection part of the previous scenes, but for the episode. So you're talking about what happened, what you did, how you feel about it, what it means for the world, and the struggle begins almost immediately. So instead of struggling against the authority and its actions, this struggle is about what it all means to the youthful offenders. Are they proud of what they did? Do they feel motivated and empowered to fight on? What about the cost? The people hurt because Kingu Corp struck back against the resistance? What about Kingu Corp? It's still here and has so much power. Are you making a difference? Or are you just fooling yourselves? An even scarier thought, are you just making things worse by trying? On each authority turn, I'll raise a doubt. Here we go. We'll get to that. But the authority's objective is that it will seem to youth youthful offenders that you have achieved very little and at a very high cost. Your hope is that you feel empowered about what you accomplished and recognize the sacrifices made were either necessary or beyond your control. You got round robin, violence is ugly, and the resource token is discarded, has no further use. Um, claim the number 12 by saying, you don't really think you're making things any better, do you? Um, all right, I rolled an 11. 
Um, where's my things? Um, I'm going to use altruism. Uh, Jace is definitely feeling like pretty cruddy about his dad. Um, but he's definitely feeling a lot better about the, all the people that we're helping. Um, and he's focusing on that. And honestly, he hasn't gone home. Um, he's just been like sort of either crashing with um, the friends, uh, whoever still has a, a home, or uh, hanging out around this burned out apartment building, uh, which is a big, big change for him as as the rich kid. But uh, he's he needs to be helping people right now. Uh, he definitely feels like this is the better thing to be doing. Okay. Uh, as you're doing that, I think I'll lean into this. I'll claim the number 10. Because, yeah, you bring up your dad. You know, he was uh, one of the higher ranking logics, doing pretty well. But the other logic said, that doesn't make much sense. That can't be real, right? Except that uh, you overhear some, some of the uh, uh, people in the community just sort of chatting and seems like they're uh, rather chatting rather jovially and laughing about how you know, one of the law jacks uh, McMahon uh, was stripped of his rank and he's just stumbling around uh, like in the alley behind the bar drunk off his ass uh, they just seem to have a good laugh about that like they don't seem to notice that his son is within ear, uh, within the your reach what's the yeah. word yeah earshot well, thank you when, okay, yeah, like, when <laughs> don't, yeah. don't don't you dare never mind that's gonna be a meme isn't it <laughs> I'm not, never mind i'm not that popular go ahead <laughs> i'll stand up <laughs> all right go for it roll the dice eight all right claim your number and i am going to use Self-reliant. Um, she hasn't checked in with her foster parents. She They haven't messaged her. She hasn't checked to see if they've lost their jobs or she doesn't care. Um, but she's helping, like, helping people get settled, giving them tips on, you know, the best place that makes squats, how to remain hidden, how to feed yourself when you're on the streets, and all of the stuff that she taught herself at a very young age. All right, so yeah, you're uh, helping some people out. Some of them seem reassured, and uh, someone comes up to you. Well, what, and what do we do about these? And it uh, brings you over to another room where there's a uh, looks like there's a few gunshot victims that uh, you know they're not in the hospital. They're laying around in this this room that doesn't look very sterile, and uh, it looks like some there's a couple of people who are might be dead. Other ones are groaning in pain, and uh, some of them are bleeding. They've got crappy bandages. It looks looks like these people are really suffering and don't have like a proper medical personnel, let alone uh, equipment. I'll claim the number seven. Yeah. Uh, I'll stand up. All right, roll the dice. <laughs> it's the number you rolled before. Two D6 here. Out. Oh. He only rolled one. Yeah. A six. All right. So a nine. Oh, it's a nine? Nine total. He rolled 1d6 twice. I see. Okay. Either way, still unclaimed. So claim your thing and use your conviction. Uh, I will use the conviction uh, uh, overconfident. Uh, I, he has read a, a bunch of uh, like uh, medical texts and whatnot and he believes that he can can help with the you know, like rudimentary uh first aid and uh like triage tactics and he's like putting tourniquets on people and like like uh making sure that bandages are being chained uh, right. dressing wounds and such yeah with it you're able to step in and help out a bunch however yeah, you're overconfident. You're not a fully trained uh, medical person. At one point, uh, 
uh, you make a mistake and somebody starts bleeding profusely it goes into uh, convulsions and dies right then and there in front of you you don't know if it's your fault but it sure seemed like it just was I am now in the corner <laughs> really upset <laughs> It's like, Except you did help some people, but that person not so much. It feels like it feels like it was your intervention that caused them to die. But that said, they were pretty messed up. But they were probably going to die anyway, so you know. <laughs> All right, anybody going to stand up? Uh, sure. It's Sarah or Thomas. Uh, no, I have a question. Do I have to react to what just happened there, or what else nope. I'm doing other places? Okay. Gotta roll uh, the dice then. Seven. Uh, oh, good. Uh, are you selling out or are we losing this one? I'm going to sell out. Um, oh, man. But I love the episodes that end on a dour note. Yeah, I, I'm actually. Um, so earlier when I realized that fighting isn't going to get me everywhere or anywhere, but um, I can use my platform um, and use my my pretty to do it. Um I've it's worked. I've gotten the following. I've I've become kind of the voice of the resistance and and the face of the resistance and everything. But um the cost is that uh pretty sells out to vain. Um and I now enjoy the idea that I look better than everyone else. Um I'm so much better than they are. Uh so a lot of my values that that drew me to this group and and let me be close, I'm now um kind of uh part of my personality is shifting to, to be a little different, um, to that. So, um, yeah, I start, uh, whining about, um, things that don't matter as much on the, um, the, the vlog. Uh, so I start talking about how, um, uh, like I miss baths and, 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 and like hot ba bubble baths. And here's how I like, keep my skin looking nice in uh while we live in squalor <laughs> so like uh using um different uh like spices and stuff to use contouring and things like that so like the platform is shifting to be not as as popular but uh it does have a boost on morale and um so like uh it has become a source of entertainment for the people here and um so they come for the news and also for um <laughs> squalor tips <laughs> with uh with truth <laughs> right. so you feel empowered about you what you accomplished your community kind of comes together and uh weathers the sacrifices uh, stoically and uh it feels like you're turning a corner to really stand up against kingu corp where it really seemed like they were at a super position of power and acceptance at the beginning of this school year mm -hmm. not so long ago uh, so for the reflection of this, we just do the um, find out who wins the who won the episode. Uh, you get the good ending because you won all the struggles. You get to choose a system of control and destroy it. Ooh. Uh, definitely community consequences, I think. Yeah, I think like, that's something. I, at, at at least Panda would be for that because his family is still out there trying to make a living. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's proved it's proven ineffective uh, by us um, that punishing broadly just causes them problems. That sounds fair. Uh, so yeah, the King of Corp uh, either they stop using or it's made ineffective. A combination of the two, I suppose. Uh, the community consequences and ultimately, as a policy, it probably won't be uh, won't really be used much in the future, at least not around here. Um, and uh, yeah, you've succeeded. If we were going to continue the campaign, you would go on to do another uh, episode, uh, but you sort of get to choose your direction from there. Uh, this one was a lot more, um, I guess, prescribed, but uh, again, sort of gives you scaffolding. Or structure. Yeah. Gradually mm -hmm. removed as you go on through the scenes. Um, um, sold out convictions, though, because you succeeded in one, but there were some convictions that were sold out. Let's... Let's identify those and uh, bear witness to their their uh, eruption. Yeah, where do you where do you uh, want to start? 
Let's start with uh, Sarah's because that's easily in our memory. Just state which one that was just to refresh it. You yeah, just sold out. I sold out pretty um, for, I have to switch back over for Vane. For Vane. Yep. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, stuck up and focused on your appearance. Mm -hmm. I'm better than <laughs> everyone. All right. And uh, who else sold out a conviction? I did. Um, I, I sold out Trills. Uh, which is Panda is an adrenaline junkie. Nothing gets him high like breaking the rules. He's now reckless. You begin to seek extreme dangers and don't care who gets hurt, even if it's you. So, yeah. Uh, going on with all that, uh, that breaking the system and hacking stuff made him like yeah, when his family contacted him and they were like, "Well, we're having all these problems," like, "Yeah, go, go and do your thing and leave me. I'll be, I'll deal with it." All right. Any others? Yeah. You want to go, Chris? Yeah. Uh, go for it. Uh, I sold out Rich. You know, he came from all money, never known par poverty. And can buy pretty much whatever they want. Uh, and then uh, sold out to Prolificate. So I uh, guess now uh, they just throw money at everything. It's like, oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, uh, Money is... Uh, money money is king. Yeah, it is. Cream, cash rules everything around me. All right, any others? Yeah. I sold out Outrage, which is Injustice Makes You Mad, and you aren't afraid to express that anger to its face. Sold out to Wrathful. Uh, you're angry, and someone's going to pay for it. You don't much care if they deserve it or not. She is just angry at everything. Angry at the world. It's four of them. Were there any others? Jace managed to not yep. sell out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I'll point out that you won seven, all seven of them, uh, but you sold out four convictions to do it. Uh, if you would have sold out three fewer convictions, you still would have won the episode, but maybe things would have gone a little darker. Um, but the ultimate like tally and outcome would have been still in your favor. Uh, but you did have to sell out at least one conviction in order to in order to achieve victory on the scoreboard. Mm. So, so on a longer running um, game or campaign, it might be wise to be a little bit smarter about when you sell out and when you don't, yeah. or uh, be yeah. more willing to take your lumps. Uh, but that said, you're idealistic teenagers and uh, sort of burning the candle at both ends. So. Uh, as a one shot, you know, Misspent Youth doesn't play quite as well with the consequences because why wouldn't you just sell out and win every time? But um, <laughs> in the long term, though, yeah, this was a, this was a victory, but one that uh, cost you a lot of your values. So mm -hmm. just just bear that in mind. <laughs> and I also just wanted to say thank you to everybody for playtesting this. I had a great time, and thank no you problem. for running. Yeah, yeah, thank it was you. Great to have some yeah. people interested in doing this. So. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Cliff, for running for us. Uh, had a ton of fun um, learning a new game um, and and seeing what works and what doesn't and being able to give feedback. A uh, lot that we liked, a lot of tension that we commented that we liked, and uh, excited to see what the final version of the game looks like. So thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. I'm headed down